Uh, okay, so the oh. ticker is starting to work. So I'm hoping that means in about a couple I'm, of seconds, people will start seeing us. Pretty sure that that's, that's how it should work. Uh, there's no way to know, really. No, I guess I could I, keep the stream running while we try to do the stream, and then I totally wouldn't be distracted. That, uh, you know, if, you, if if we're not confusing and distracting to you while you're doing the show and you're in the show, I think we're doing something right, because that's usually how we try to do are it. Are you even podcasting if you aren't horribly distracted by technical issues and trying to set up your stream? I mean, come I, on. Eh, maybe. Uh, like, <laughs> I mean, we're halfway decent. We've done a hundred and... Well, this is technically our 110th time trying to do this, yeah. so maybe we'll get better at some point. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out at some point. Hey, everybody, yeah. welcome to another podcast. <laughs> Two old guys talking about the best tech of their week on a podcast conveniently called The Best, the best of, of Our, our week. week. Exactly. I'm and, Juan uh, Carlos Bagnell, a.k.a. Some Gadget Guy. Uh, as always, with my good buddy, TK My Bay. What, what? I'm bringing that back. <laughs> Sorry, what? yeah, <laughs> bring it back. Yes, exactly. TK Frozen Bay, because that's how it, how it's going this late last few days. I am wearing a sweat, somewhat of a thin sweater, but it is it is cold. Mm -hmm. It is I cold. Put on a hoodie. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. We're it, it, it is it spring yet though? That's the question because I think that's what people are trying to get in the chat. Has it been you know spring yet? Like the flowers are blooming? No, we're still getting rain. We're still in cold weather. Uh, we had hail yesterday. That was fun. That's fun. Ha yeah, hail, thunder, and everything um, in the middle of, like, I mean, we were not in April yet. Today, the last day, right? So, yeah, um, uh, I see John, Barry Johnson with us. Uh, we're confusing Jermaine, uh, Mr. Tech uh, Tech by Jermaine, of course, concept creator. Uh, I see um, <laughs> Lampros. Lam uh, Lampros? Hopefully I'm saying that Lampros correctly. Lampros bros. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, own Sean in there. there. David but... Burns is hanging out with us as well. Hey, nerds. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, hope you guys are having a great Friday. Actually, yeah, I was like, it is Friday. Friday, October 31st. No, yeah, October 31st. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. March 31st. Yeah. A few months earlier. Just a few. I, I mean, you, you jumped us straight to Techtober. I mean, I think I, you've, got, you've got gadgets on the brain. Let's not I, do that because I still no. haven't caught up from last Techtober. I, I am currently finishing yeah. up. It's It just went live on the Patreon. A video on the Moto Edge. <laughs> <laughs> I am so far behind. You are so, so <laughs> on the ball from last year in October. Hey, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are doing great. Um, but you did drop a video this week, so you did you did have some Vivo love this week um, yeah. on the channel. So you did cover that that Ooh. device that somehow changes colors depending Ooh. on where you are. <laughs> so now I need to also do a bit of a comparison video because I totally screwed my embargoes. But this is the Vivo V27, and mm -hmm. this is the Vivo V27 Pro. They yep. look very very similar. We've got dimensities in here, 8200 nice. and 7200. I'm loving I seeing more dimensities, so man. Oh, yeah. pleased with. Uh, so we keep doing this thing in tech reviewer land. Juan's going to yep. soapbox for just a second. He can't go long because his voice won't hold out for full rant. But the mini rant, anytime someone picks up a premium tier device, $700 or more, mm -hmm. and they utter something like, but what most people do or average consumers, we need to... Uh, sort of metaphorically slap some sense into those people because yeah. these are phones that are going to sell for roughly, I don't know, 350 to 450 euro, depending on region and features mm -hmm. and storage and all those things. These phones are gorgeous. They're ridiculously overkill powerful for covering the basics. A Dimensity 8200 specifically yep. is coming in pretty close to the ballpark of like Snapdragon 888s and even nipping at the heels of 8 Gen 1s, phones from mm -hmm. last year, only yeah. with much better power management. This is way too much power already to just like, oh, but I guess you can watch some TikToks on it before the government bans the TikToks. We'll talk about that later too. Oh yeah, um, I know. that. That's another fun one. So... Impress these are some of the thinnest phones I've I've handled in recent memory. They're they're tapered in curve. So some of our audience are probably not gonna like that as a design. And it's got that thin rail design that um are they I, curved I, on uh, both the front and the back or just on the back? Both on the front and the back. It feels okay. a lot like an LG velvet. It feels yeah, like yeah. you're holding just this tiny rail um on the sides of the phone. But for all of the things that we would just take for granted. Oh, and the camera sensor is a one over one point five six. So it's it's like that mainstream competitive it's gonna kind of 
punch just below something like a Galaxy S23. So like the 66 or the, uh, it's not the 809, right? Or the eight, no, uh, no, 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 uh, 766, I think. Yeah, yeah, 766. So it's, it's the popular 50 megapixel, which yeah. a lot of people uh, will 50 take. 50 megapixel, yep. one over 1.56. Uh, very similar it, it, in configuration. Very good performer. Size to something like well an S23. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then with Vivo, because we know Vivo for cameras. It's not a of Vivo course. X, but it's still pretty good for camera tech. But one okay. of the things that just really tickled me is uh, it, we, we shared a love. I, I feel mm -hmm. like our, our, our friendship and our relationship bloomed first on a really pretty phone that took us all by surprise way back in the day when mid-rangers really started punching above their price tag. It's a $400 yeah. phone. Um, the Honor 8 is still... Oh, man. Yep. One of the prettiest phones ever made. I mm -hmm. think it still holds the record for most people who ask me what case I had on my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Honor 8 was gorgeous. Thank so you, I Apple. I do yeah. enjoy... Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> I, I do enjoy... You have to give credit when credit is due, you know. But when yeah, companies play with design and aesthetic and they just do something that's a little novel. Um, I liked it when... The, when um, I want to say it was Huawei with the P10 did Pantone color with that textured um, metal back. Mm -hmm. So it had that kind of rough edge. So it was shiny and it was shimmery, but you wouldn't get fingerprints on the back of it. Something like that, that just kind of catches the eye for a second. Um, that can be really fun. I know a lot of us are just going to put cases on these phones anyway, but what Vivo is doing here is, uh, is, is sensitivity to spectrums of light. So uh, if you take the phone outside and mm -hmm. sunlight hits the phone, it starts changing the backplate color. So this is the V27. Mm -hmm. It normally, it has, it's kind of hard to show here. Like you can see that there's this kind of like fogginess. What it's got, okay. it's got kind of a plastic backplate that looks like marble. Hold on, if we're, gonna, like if, a, we're gonna, if we're gonna yeah, show sure. and tell, we should make one a little bit bigger. Make okay, yeah, I, I kind of see it, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you can kind of see. And I'm reflecting off of all my studio lights and stuff like that. But they also send along what... a little blue light. So, like, you click this in, and it's it's got <laughs> sort of a blue UV. Oh, yeah. and it's a it, hot light, too. It's so a hot like light. It just... It's trying to get it so that you can get the uh, the color change to happen <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> in so, studio. So, you, you kind of just hold this up here, and you go, boop, and you go, boop. And you, hey, you there get you it, go. Like a little smiley face. Why so serious? Right there. Just drawing it's a, in It's a time. custom edition Vivo V70, uh, <laughs> V27. And, and it also like it, the uh, it's kind of hard for me to show here, but the uh, the ring light will light up when it detects hard UV on oh. the back of the ring light. So it's so uh, it it's one of like a uh, glow in the dark kind of thing. It absorbs a little bit of light and then it carries some of that. Yeah, for sure. And and then yeah, this yeah, lasts the 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 glossy lasts for a really long time. So you hold it out in the sun and it gets super super dark, and uh, your phone is a different color until it's been inside for a little while. And then okay. the V27 Pro, even though it's a different texture, it's a different look, it's a different finish. I should take the case off. Um, this is more of a matte satin kind of I guess, look. Yeah, and yeah. Same you can, thing. You can, you can kind of draw into it, or it turns immediately dark blue. That is very con that is a something. very stark contrast between the original color and it, that one. It yeah. is a completely. It's not subtle. And so, no. like TK and I, we're old enough that we remember the glory days of hypercolor T-shirts. And it's like now, now we've got a hypercolor phone, um, which is really to... fun. It, it doesn't well, change the functionality of your phone, but now I've got a dark blue phone. It doesn't go into super turbo phone. mode when it goes into. Nah, unfortunately, <laughs> no. 8200 is powerful enough on its own. It doesn't that really need true. super no, no. turbo mode, TK. Um, no, I know. They, well, they have yeah. monster mode, don't they have? Like, I mean, they overpower the full power of the 82 or not monster so, mode. Uh, on it's the something else they call it on. They video. haven't been. Um, there's, there's still boost oh, i'm gonna go back into my battery well, specs maybe the x series only has it. that because i want to say i thought it was on the but, x but on the x the dimensity doesn't that's the only one we have i don't think dimensity has has a monster mode i check check i make sure I'm, I'm not totally I, wrong i, I got my my uh, my 9200 right here apps battery uh, usage battery we're doing it live people we're off. doing it live so what you can do is you can add an app to their game manager, and then you can push that into a boost mode, like a game oh, boost mode. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't think the dimensities, this one doesn't have monster mode. I'm giving it a second to boot up. Calculator, it. ultra game mode, smart mirroring, smart Well, no, no, no. If you, if you go into um, 
uh, battery settings. Don't we have a performance mode in there? No, I was just in battery settings. Oh, you were just I wasn't in battery settings. And sometimes, and on the on... Qualcomm versions, monster yeah. mode is in your notification shade. You can toggle yeah. it there. But I'll there's there's no, I don't think there's monster mode on the Dimensities. Yeah, you know, I mean, the joke would be <laughs> Dimensities don't need it. <laughs> don't need it. Yeah, no, no, exactly. What are you talking about? Um, okay, so we do one. have <laughs> we have ultra game mode on the Dimensity that's on the in the notification panel. And that does turn on. Uh, let me check here. Dave Burns, I think... if I can't unleash the beast, why would I even buy one? That's a very good question. I would like to ask Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, could, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Well, you had to go there, if, didn't you? If you're on the Patreon, um, I have a tier just for script previews. And uh, it, it's not something that I do a whole lot of, but sometimes I'll right out of yeah i guess you're right there is no early there's no monster um i wrote 9300 words on why i'm a samsung hater and i'm not sure i'm gonna shoot that video but if you're ever curious why i'm so critical of samsung there are 9,000 words on that topic on patreon.com slash some gadget guy okay so i i do stand corrected it's not monster mode but they do have a game an ultra game mode right. that you can turn no, on no, no. so so when you do ultra game mode you can kind of pop apps in there that aren't games yeah but that's different than the and, total, and i think the total chipset soc chipset running at, a, at a, yeah everything running yeah so yeah. for for me the 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 reason why i was saying is that because um most of the time when i'm running it i'm like running it we're running cap cut or i'm editing video or i'm shooting sure. content so for rendering purposes i wanted to render as best yeah. as possible it's still pretty decent i mean the 9200 again it's it's a very fast processor it's not there um it just i remember adding cap cut as a game into the game center and then i'd keep game uh performance game mode on so that i have it running all the time but yeah you're right dimensity doesn't have it and then on the on the Qualcomm, I never had a chance. Well, I didn't have a long enough time with it to, to test out yeah, the performance really and all that. Yeah, I, I shot a lot of stuff and I didn't render a lot of stuff. I, I didn't get that rendered maybe one or two reels. I think this is yet another one of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. and, and again, we're, we're joined by people that I feel appreciate that nuance already. So we're, we're always kind of preaching to the choir on stuff like this. Yeah, yeah of but course. The, the more I handle these phones, like from from a vivo to an iku you know sort of like an iku neo is mm -hmm. a remarkably powerful phone that had 256 gigs of storage had a snapdragon 870 i believe mm -hmm. um and it was i mean like and it launched at like 400 euro i'm so over this casual blending of phones that do phone things and phones that are more computers yeah. And, and like we treat them all the same and we only benchmark them and only use them at the lowest common denominator kind of use. And if we do that, then the, the, the sort of spectrum of devices gets really, really small. Yeah. What, what are, yeah, what are I, I feel the functional we've lost things that separate if, each other? Exactly. I, I feel we've lost as techies if we're pretending that an $800 iPhone just to cover the basics makes any sense at all. If you, if you want to call it the fashion flex, like you just needed the right label on your purse, that's fine. I can't make that video because I'm not that guy. You I also don't carry your purse, but I understand. Yes, no. But no, I have tons of man bags. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'll call them purses. I'm a yeah. bag whore. <laughs> I love <laughs> a, bags. I'm Joey, not calm down. Calm down, Joey. It's just called a man purse, man. Just let it go, man. No, no, no. I've got Toomey's and I've got... No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I, I even care. got a carrier for the I Xiaomi 13 Pro um, and, and, that and was actually literally a sling with a... Messenger all bags, it is is a phone bag, yeah. Camera slings. I've got two camera slings down here just for like cabling and Dude, storage. Dude, don't get me that's, on the camera slings. It. Yeah, no, no. What, what bothers me is there's someone out there who really only needs a $200 entry-level phone. Yeah. But because of the way that we talk about average consumers, we've sold them an 800 or a thousand dollar phone. Oh yeah. I and know. I pick up this Vivo and it is, it's 450 Euro, the configuration that I have. Yeah. And I pick up this, this Vivo, which is roughly about is, the same price anyways in the U S dollars. If you were in them. Yeah. Uh, pretty close. Right. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I'm always having to put that huge, it's so exhausting. Like, Oh yeah. And it's about 450 bucks. Not in my region. Okay. I can't, you know, you get that comment and you're like, yeah, so I'm going to spend 15 minutes in my video. And in Egypt, if you buy the, the 128 gig version, it'll be this much. Yeah, yeah, in every, in every, go, yeah, yeah go exactly through every region. And this but will translate into. if you buy it in Turkey, you know, like. 
On this day of the month at 11:30, as the stock market in Turkey will carry the now, yeah, I know that just yeah, just uh, allowing for inflation in the exchange rate between currencies, <laughs> allowing for inflation. Oh my God! And then do 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 projection, you know, start right? trading for futures, and it'll be a anticipate the price. Video, yeah, yeah, and and then at the end of that video, the next day. All of that math will be invalid. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you'll still get one comment saying, "Dude, you did." I think you made a mistake on the like those. Yeah, you know, uh, if you're gonna nitpick, so, you're gonna nitpick at the end of the day. So yeah, yeah. We, we, I feel, I feel a lot of us need to be the evangelists that draw that line between phones that are doing phone things and yeah. phones that are built with other specific purposes. An yeah. iPhone 14 is a phone built to do phone things, and it's yep. good. At a it's lot of things, it. but it's yeah. not built to specialize on anything. For, yeah. And you can get productivity phones, you can get yeah, gaming yeah. phones, you can get computer phones, phones, phones that really do su succeed at replacing other computers and you content can get, creation. You know, con you know, gaming specific. I just got phone another comment. So, so someone who has a channel with not a lot of subscribers and is making only Steam Deck content left a comment on my razor edge comparison just geez you guys will compare anything to a steam deck and you're like yeah how dare i compare a mini tablet built for gaming against a mini pc built for gaming for gaming that's just beyond the <laughs> I, I have no idea how you made that compare that that how did you draw the line Juan? i mean ne like next i'm going to compare a steam deck to i don't know a, a nintendo switch Oh, Whoa! Crap. You're gonna how, go how there? Could you even, how could you even do that? They're, they're I don't know, man. I think you're you're messing with you're, you're messing with the universe at this point. Like even Neo would come out and say, "Like, dude, what, stop." What's that line from from Network? You are meddling with the primal <laughs> forces of nature, yeah. and you. I can't remember. I remember it's, it. It's I, yeah. Baby, and it's one of the best movie movie performances of all time. Um, but yeah. So getting back to the Vivo. In yeah, my, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You were talking Vivo. Vivo. Yeah, yeah. 450 euro. I, I like we're putting such a serious hurt on entry level premium because the diminishing returns between something like this and a Galaxy S23, you're having to get more and more specific why you would start recommending a thousand dollar phone. Yeah, I, like you're you're going to get a faster phone than this, but you're not going to get an over twice as fast phone. I, I think this. what's what, what's you're been gonna going to get on. a better camera, but you're not going to yeah. get twice as good of a camera. And in many places, like especially with the way that Vivo processing lands, mm -hmm. you might like this camera better, especially if you're an auto mode shooter and you like those bright HDRs mm -hmm. Man, Vivo's brightness, like the way they go for exposure is very unique, it, it, but it's it, very since, pleasing. Since like the um, X70 Pro Plus with the X90 yeah. Pro Plus with the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the IQ 11 uh, that we got. Yeah, no, absolutely big fan of of, of their color science. Yeah. Um, I love, the one thing I'm still waiting on, which really kind of gets me, Grant got this because he has the uh, the uh, the Snapdragon version, uh, Bluetooth support mm -hmm. for video. Yeah, I, 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 I am, nice. I, I need that function <laughs> that, that function will, will make it so that I can produce content from that phone anywhere. Um, I, I mean, mm -hmm. nothing that, that I couldn't do it now because I can do, I, we could use the road, we can set it up and I can use sure. it offline. Um, and that was one thing that I really loved about, you know, with, um, what's it called with the X, uh, the find X six pro, uh, even yeah. a find X five pro, you can actually use Bluetooth audio import. Like it's not a function. You just turn it on and it works. Um, and it's something that helps us to produce and be more productive on the go. And again, use our devices more like a DSLR or an SLR camera, like what we normally would have done. And this is why like, I'm, I'm stepping away from taking camera bodies with me anymore. I want to just take the phone, the right phone for what I needed. Yeah. And um, like that, that's like, that would be the killer feature that I'm waiting on the Vivo. It, it, it's, I know it's going to come at some point, but mm -hmm. I'm just hoping sooner than later. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the, the I think one of the challenges that we're always going to face is there's a certain amount of attention per region per chipset. Yeah. And media tech updates on the X90 Pro have been a little pokey. Like, I only remember one major up getting one major update so far. I want to say one. Yeah, yeah. I don't think and I have the phone, had... the phone could use just a little extra polish. It's not like any, I feel like anything is terminally broken. Um, but again, I, I just, I don't want to lose sight of this. There, there's a good reason why you might enjoy a pixel seven pro. And mm -hmm. that is a very expensive phone. 
And I think Google has made some of the best Android phones that do phone things. But I'd also put a, a OnePlus 11 up there. That is a premium option. It is a very yep. good phone that does phone things. Exactly. The OnePlus 11. And there yeah, you are. Exactly. I've got hey, mine voila. over here. Some, oh, right over here. Yeah. Still in the original, like, bought it before the phone shipped. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. The Did first they not... bumper case available on. So I, I reached back out to them, like, after I was in New York. Or actually, when I Nothing. was in New York. And I was like, hey. Um, you took the case out, but like you realize this is a slippery phone, right? Like you're you're begging for, like I, I don't get me wrong, I, I I like Max, but I always feel like you know Max would be the guy to be like a perfect poster child of saying this is what would happen to your phone if you didn't carry a case with it. Like that would be my thing for it. It's <laughs> uh, like no, no, seriously. Um, Some people they, take care of their products. No, I, I, and I and I think really I, aggressively. They're they're yeah. I mean, we can have that debate for like another episode of Best Hard Week. Will be like case or no case, and see how much the comments will go. Right. Um, but for me, it was, yeah, so I, when I reached out, they were like, yeah, sure. And then they, at some point it, it showed up and I'm like, yeah, finally, the sandstone, it's good. Because we used to get, like, there used to be reviewer packages where we used to get all the cases. Mm -hmm. um, but I think things are changing a little bit as well. As well, well the and also distribution was wacky. We knew that there yeah. was a targeted focus. Oppo yeah. was looking at China first and yeah. putting together all those kits. It's, it's a very different ballgame. Oh, no, no, uh, absolutely. Corcoran brings up exactly what I'm trying to talk about. Uh, okay. The OnePlus 11 doesn't have video output if memory serves. That That's hasn't true. always been the case for OnePlus. Nope. And so the OnePlus 10 and the OnePlus 9, I believe the OnePlus 8, they all has had, it? I believe they all had video output. Yeah, um, video output was still, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, 8, 9, and 10, but not the 10T. The 10T right. didn't have that either. But right, the T, right. and, and I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking more of the pros. So Oh, no, 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 absolutely. 8, 8, 9, uh, it, it's 8, 9, 10 Pro. Yeah. In in the prior to the 10T, we used to have uh, the the T series we were like the 8T prior to that because I don't think we had a 9T, did we? I think we had a 9 and a 9 Pro. We didn't have a 9T. That was the year they skipped the T and had the 8T and then it jumped over to the 10T. Um, video output wasn't there, and I think it was really OnePlus and Oppo's kind of trying to figure out what is the right tailoring of that experience to be able to get the price down to around sure. 650 because this is prior to that we've always seen 800, 899, 799 for the T series sure. or something like that. Um, before we go too long, I don't know if you got e email this morning or you checked your inbox, but it looks yeah, like the yeah. uh, the one plus on pad, the Discord too. yeah, okay. The one plus pad. pad looks like it's coming up next, like finally, like they, they said April, and I was like, okay, well, it's not going to happen. I mean, it is technically the end of April, mm -hmm. but like you know what I mean. Um, so I'm excited for that. That part I'm actually excited because I got a chance to see it at uh, in Barcelona, and yeah, that is it, it's some nice, nice, decent hardware, like it looks well, really let me, clean. Let me see if I can just pull this up the, the yeah i mean right now in. they only had something like referencing uh i mean they have obviously all the specs we've known the specs since launch mm -hmm. uh or since announcement i would say it's not launch um and then they, they sent out the email this morning like hey hit the notify button so you know when it's going to be available and if voila mm -hmm. the oneplus pad um it is the first of, it, of its kind uh you know first of its name um uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was going, uh, the, you know, all, uh... I mean, the, the, the thing is we've got a lot on this. So the, the interesting thing to me was the aspect ratio being the seven by five. five. Yeah. I, I don't know why, you know, two by three or some other aspect ratio, they, they've got panels. So seven by five is the thing, I guess, but, um, 144 Hertz, uh, refresh rate display, 9,000 quad yep. speaker audio. Um, they're saying a month of standby time, which, I, okay, cool. I, I'm more concerned about what's it like when you use it, not I, not not, not when you're when, you're when you're no 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 yeah when you're like just you leave it. It's more about like they're saying is if you charge it and you forget to use it and or you just haven't used it in a couple of days, you're not going to come back to the phone or the tablet sure. where it just basically like you know borked basically, which is what happens yeah. to me. Good time, I'll I'll leave a phone and I forget to charge it, and I, by the time I come back to try to use it, I'm like crap, I forgot to turn it off and it's dead. But yeah, no, yeah, uh, it's it has that nice brush metal uh, design on the back, so you can't really see it as much there. But that those the way the light is reflecting on the top portion of the image here, it's because there's mm -hmm. that brushed metal that goes in the same pattern as the the uh, the, the the camera. As you can, yeah, this one yeah. looks better there, and um, it really feels nice. Uh, the case on is mm -hmm. also that they're I'm hoping it's included because if I remember correctly, it was supposed to be all together, <laughs> at least the way they explained it. Um, it feels really good. It's a, it, it felt more like the surface case that we've used in the past. Yeah. Like that nice no, cover, I, I think, uh, the, the material. I, I think this is going to be interesting to see if we can revive the cachet of Android tablets. And, we and, know that and using this, it more like a PC, out. though. 
because that was yeah. if you scroll down a little bit the more whole point of like android yeah, 13 yeah, yeah. was that Absolutely. we were supposed to be getting all of this extra but at the same time we're we know that this is going to be uh we know that this is going to be a pretty brutal competitor for whatever pixel tablet is going to be coming it, out i mean it, a density it, 9000 versus a tensor 2 is going to be an amazing showdown so Q power right there speaking of that we were supposed to hear about the pixel tablet in q1 and I think if I'm not mistaken, today is the last day of Q1. <laughs> so unless, unless, I'm unless not, I don't even, I don't even bother. Anymore. No, no, like, I know. But I mean, like unless like at one o'clock like in the afternoon, there's like a thousand videos of the pixel pad. That's been like, I've been using it for a month and a half. And how much do you want to bet that OnePlus was waiting on this email? Cause they were going to send it out whenever we got more word on the pixel tablet and yeah like, probably okay well they're, we're supposed to get more word on the pixel tablet the in end q1. Of q1 and so then we got to the end of q1 and they were like i don't know just push just push go just go just go ahead just, and send out info on this just tablet. say it's end we of april google it, it's, anymore no no just say it's end of april right before google io <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably where we're going to hear about the pixel uh the pixel pad uh yeah actually it would probably be called the pixel i don't know i hope they don't go with it I, I realize it is a, it is a tablet, but I don't you know what you only call it pad as close to the word mm -hmm. iPad. Now it's the Oppo pad, or the not the Oppo. Well, actually, Oppo does have a variant of this. That was the other weird thing. Yeah. Is, so Oppo's releasing their version. They're calling the Oppo pad, and then the OnePlus is releasing the OnePlus pad. Very similar aesthetics, I would say, uh, or yeah. design at least, if you if you want to call it that way. Um, and of course, uh, I think I saw it also on their on their own social media thing. But so yes, long story short. Uh, all the specs are there. We know what it looks like. We we, we have an idea how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have a pen. It's going to have a, a dock, and supposedly everything comes together for around five hundred, if I'm not mistaken. If, uh, uh, like, yeah. So again, I reasonable you know, price. We 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 look at. I, I feel like we've we keep drawing these artificial divisions between phone, tablet, Chromebook, laptop, desktop. You know, mini PC, full desktop, blah blah yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah, and I I, uh, I, I feel like. Man, if we can be putting together really sort of ultra cheap, not really fun to use Chromebooks for like two ninety nine, mm -hmm. it gets harder and harder to make the jump to a more expensive tablet. It, you like how you build that pricing because unfortunately, consumers don't have a very good understanding of why one product is more expensive than another. And we've sold the sort of convenience of it is a tablet and tablets do tablet things. And then well, you're like, well, I'm picking up this tablet that I got for free on my cell phone carrier contract for buying a phone and it can't do anything. This is garbage. I'm going to go yeah. get an iPad and iPads just work. And so until we can kind of break through a little bit of that and say mm -hmm. like At this price, we should expect some tier of performance or some some explanation of what makes this nicer it's going to be really different difficult for android to break through because oneplus is not going to put a billion dollars a year or excuse me oppo is not going to put a billion dollars a year behind their marketing especially in north america and so far the only company that seems capable of that is uh is google so if yep. it's not going to be a galaxy tab and it's not going to be an ipad you have a huge uphill to, to kind of regain some consumer market share. We've been selling Chrome for so long now. Well, and Google and has been focused on Chrome. Yeah. That Android for tablets is kind of withered. Well, the, the pandemic like also changed our approach to uh, to Chrome OS because everybody, at least <laughs> everybody that has, uh, you know, kids or families or people that go to school during the pandemic had uh, either access to or given to a loaner Chromebook, uh, Chromebook that yeah. kids were able to go to. So people got any experience and they started using Chromebook and Chrome OS. So for me, it, it still kind of falls back into Google not wanting to put in a desktop experience, like not even developing it beyond just keeping it in the back burner and not even allowing it to be on a pixel device, which, you know, hinders the process. Like, I feel like if there was one thing you wanted people to try and to try to use and give you feedback on, so you know what people right. are looking for and put it in since it's been there since Android 11 or even 10, if I'm not mistaken, um, let people use desktop mode. And that's what I feel like yeah. everybody's waiting to see or, on the pixel tab. Or also pad. like, Maybe fix desktop mode. It's <laughs> Maybe give us a launcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Android thirteen. Uh, so. Thirteen is it, we took a step back. You know that dance, one two step forward, one step back kind of thing, mm -hmm. or was it one step forward, two step back? You know, you know the dance. I still I, feel like Android eleven was probably our best flavor of just the 
the eleven was the most performance. Video out. Like from from a, from a ten to eleven, it was a massive boost in performance. There was some hiccups, there was some some growing pains because it was that much of a difference in there. But once you were on eleven, you had the performance. You had a lot of good improvements. Twelve minor spec updates, and I feel like thirteen was fixing what twelve was supposed to be at launch. But yeah, seems like we took a step back on the on the desktop mode. And I'm hoping, this is literally my hope, is that when Pixel Pad does come out, it comes out with a legit desktop experience. Like an actual saying, look, this is what we want. This is what it's going to be. Let's, let, let's share this with you. And at some point, that translates somewhere into you know, the, the OnePlus Pad or whatever other Android de- uh, tablets that are using non-Samsung you know, One UI desktop experience, that, uh, which essentially is DeX for the most part. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that was so, something that um, was shown up this morning, but yeah. Vazikos brings up a great question that we don't have an answer on, and we won't until someone can do a teardown, I believe. Any news mm-hmm. on OnePlus Pad serializing the batteries? I and again, that. this is one of those situations. I really hope they don't do yeah. that in the way that uh, serializing Apple's... repair parts will break the, mm-hmm. the performance of your product. We can hope. Um, unfortunately, we won't know. And it's going to be one of those situations where we're going to have to have some real difficult conversations in our enthusiast and hobbyist communities about how do we change tactics on these companies for not supporting these kinds of business practices. We're going to come down to Samsung with screens. It's going to come to Apple with everything that you can't repair on an iPhone. And we Mm -hmm. need to make it unfashionable. So if another company starts saying like, hey, if we make it harder to fix this OnePlus pad, and it breaks and they just have to go and buy another one, um, we need to say, no, that's not gonna be cool. Yeah. It, it's, it's gonna be tough because at the same time, we also want better competition in this space. So if Samsung sees that you're out there and you're buying Apple products because you're fed up with their business practices, they're just gonna try and make their products more like Apple. If yeah. OnePlus is like, hey, we put out this, this tablet, and no, oh, you're not buying it. They don't, they don't know why you're not buying it. So, it's difficult to to kind of get that market data appropriately focused to the manufacturers and, and fl- to say and, and, and yeah exactly if we give it give the feedback that the manufacturers need to know what what is wrong what not necessarily what is wrong what's not working and what maybe should be focused on in the next iteration and how to fix it, it yeah. and the hope obviously is that you know it this isn't a one off i'm hoping is that we see a continuation to to what we are seeing here that the, the tablets ecosystem looks like it's getting more competition in 2023 pick you know google and and oneplus are going into it oppo's mm-hmm. been dead in it for a while samsung and uh, honor and xiaomi all of them have been producing tablets yearly it's not like they stopped oh, yeah. but the the i think is it ever since the uh, the pixel 7 series when google decided to just drop development you know for tablet ui mm-hmm. That was the biggest hurdle. Everybody else was just basically modifying Android to make it work in their version. Well, I mean, the, the the only good recommendation in Android land was a Galaxy tab. Absolutely. It's a gold standard. All man. inexpensive, low range. They were the models. they were the one you were referring to before. It's yeah, the one you, you get free. free. Exactly. You signed up and you're like, hey, you're going to get an LG tablet. I'm like, really? Some of the TCLs have been OK. But again, you kind of have an expectation that I'm getting something that's not going to be. I'm getting something that's a little disposable. So for, the TCLs all of this stuff hit inside. a little bit higher with the Pro series and the in the 5G series and that the, they was released it the last paper... year. The, the paper one, I think it? that they're. Yeah. I think that was a. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't that the concept? Wait, no, the, the paper phone is the concept. Sorry, yes. The no, the, no, no, the, no, the next wear paper yeah. um, that they were t- they released. So they, um, they make a couple nicer ones, but even the one that I have down here that has a, a MediaTek Companio, it's yeah, a yeah. nice watch video on kind mm-hmm. of tablet but you can't really nudge it much more into replacing a computer it's a very yeah. safe very inexpensive it still has 5g on it but you know that doesn't mean you can do a whole lot uh, oh, other than a content. data connection on it, it, it it's, other it's than more just streaming content yeah, yeah. And, and i feel like we accept this even for people who don't do anything like that on their ipads they're buying ipads because there's the idea that they could yeah. this could replace my computer this this could this is so powerful i could do this and when they're just doing simple little basic things on it it does run really well i mean it's really smooth yeah and you will feel that difference on a hundred dollar that became a free on contract tablet where it doesn't open your email very fluidly. <laughs> yeah, or or so jumping I, I think, into something that yeah, like you said, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. But I, I just I just really feel like Android has a huge mountain to climb 
to restart. I mean, there's no momentum. You've got to kickstart that thing from scratch because the only other tablets that I would recommend were Galaxy tabs, but not because mm -hmm. of Android, because of Dex. So, like, it was everything we could do to escape Android on a larger screen and use a different UI to control all of that. So Android 13 looks like a great step in the right direction, but no one knows about it. No, 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 no. one really cares about Android on I, tablets. I right will now. say the the experience that's going to come with the OnePlus Pad, though, on Android, it's going gonna, it's gonna to leverage a lot of Oppo's technology they've been using for a while. So Oppo's released, uh, I think was it one or two tablets already that have used. So one of the things that they showed us in there, and they didn't really explain how it works because they didn't want to, obviously that's early in information in there, but they're using something called PC Connect. PC Connect is their, um, is Oppo's version of um, like a desktop to client that allows you to sync up your phone's notification and, and you can transfer content over uh, Wi-Fi direct um, or over the Wi-Fi um, to your PC, but like respond to messages from your phone, things like kind of how we've seen in the past with uh, Huawei doing something like that in the past. It essentially represents like a visual representation of your phone on the, this, uh, on your monitor, uh, on your Windows PC. The way they're doing it on the next, on the on the Opal Pad, uh, the sorry, the OnePlus Pad, which is what they've done before, it's that client running on the tablet and allowing the phone. An example would be a OnePlus phone and that tablet to share internet connectivity, but also share content very seamlessly across multiple devices. Like you shoot the picture on your phone, you send it to the tablet and edit it in like seconds, and that's something that they're leveraging that I don't think. Google's going to be releasing very quickly. I think even if Google releases a desktop experience or it tries to mix it, I don't think they're working mm -hmm. very much on, on that interconnectivity between phone and tablet uh, to that level. Uh, and I think OnePlus will leverage that heavily. And I think if, for me, if when yeah. I do get my hands on one, uh, I do want to basically, that, that'll be one of my biggest focusing. PC Connect is a, was a big thing on Opal devices. OnePlus devices are going to be getting it. I think that'll be nice. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, again, something to look forward to, though. Um, Absolutely, I'm, I'm end of April. To see like how this hardware plays out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm glad they released that information today, not tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to be a very fun day for everybody. Everything you hear tomorrow <laughs> is going to be a little bit of a do, funny do you, thing. Do you think we're going to see a lot? I mean, like, I feel like over the last couple of years, the whole yeah. cachet of April Fool's Day. Has, has kind of waned. Yeah, it, it hasn't been as. I mean, it, it, they had it had it, it. I think it's past its heyday. I'll say that much. Um, right. I, th I think uh, there was a few. I, I'm sure some companies will still do some, you know, cheesy kind of like dad joke style kind of thing, whatever. But mm. you know, it's April first, so just you know, take thing everything tomorrow with a grain of salt. Any any major announcements on Saturday, it's always going to be great. Um, no, it's yeah, the reason I say that is fall for the onion. Don't don't <laughs> don't, be, don't be that. Guy. Um, Nothing posted a little teaser this morning uh, of something that looked like a can. And I was like, that kind of looks like, a, you know, the Mac Pro. Remember the old Mac Pro that looked the one that looked like a trash oh, yeah, can? The, yeah, yeah. Darth Vader's diaper genie. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's that's because that's the one we wanted. Um, it looks like, you know, maybe announcing something very soon with that. Like, but it looked more like a speaker. So like a Bluetooth speaker or something like that. Oh, OK. Um, nothing is uh, very the the marketing department and nothing i mean what do you mean marketing department i mean carl pay is basically doing carl really pay good is the marketing <laughs> like the marketing department, marketing department. Right. when i said marketing I that's why i'm like with that there's <laughs> like there's marketing like carl department. Pay and a couple couple like hamsters and wheels and like that's, yeah it's, it's literally it it's, it's carl goes into a conference room comes back out with the marketing department it was like i was in right. there i had a meeting with myself and this is what we're doing um so yeah well sorry I, i'm like catching on a whole bunch of different things kind of going on um but uh I'm, i'll say this uh I'm excited for some of the content I'll be able to put out hopefully in the next month. April for me is going to be very, it's going to be busy in a different kind of style of busy. Not 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 my normal, mm -hmm. and, I, and I said it's busy because it's not going to be smartphone specifically busy. It's going to be something mm -hmm. else, like another media, another stuff, I'm, which I'm excited that I'm able to actually start working on and, and doing more content of um, yeah. on the channel. So that that's going to be very, very nice. And then next week I'm going to be on travel going to Austin. Uh, it's going to be uh, for uh, for a week in Austin, Texas, with the fam as well. And there's nice. some work as well. There's a nice little. Uh, um, I don't know if actually they've announced it or not, but uh, I'll I'll say there's some stuff going on. I'll, I'll double check before I I open my what? mouth. Austin, <laughs> there are things going on in Austin. That sounds crazy. No, no, no. South South by Southwest is already done. This is not that. This no, is I know, but it's still yeah, yeah. Austin. It's, it's still, still like a major city. In it's Texas a major city. It's a it's a major college. If I'm not mistaken, there's like a lot of colleges down there or something. I I've never been. <laughs> I've been to Houston before. I've been actually. No, I've been you'll to like Houston Austin. twice. Austin is good times. It's gonna be hot though, dude. It's like ninety degrees in rain, and and yeah, and they get kind of yeah. too. 
at the <laughs> so, okay, it's real muggy. total opposite of where I am right now. Cold and well, I mean that's not a total opposite. We, nah, it's cold, cold and cold here. and muggy here, but I'll cold take and cold muggy. and muggy over hot and muggy. No, I yeah, know. Yeah, Austin's I know. good times. You'll 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 have a good time. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm I'm excited for that part. Um, before we get and I want to keep the the S23 Ultra. I want to talk a little bit more about that at the end, uh, a little more. But sure. have you have you used any of those AI tools yet? Have you been playing around with AI? A little on chat GPT. I, okay. I haven't really done much. The novelty of like getting sort of conversational speech back is yeah. fun. It is really oh, cool. Yeah. And I've done a few things like um, I, I was in the middle of a conversation with someone and I, I pull up chat GPT and they're like making fun of some type of speech pattern. They're like, oh yeah, like you would ever defend this. And like, okay, write me a speech in the vein of Donald Trump defending like squirrels eating your jam. And it gives you this like that pattern <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of, of Donald Trump speeches. And you're like, yeah, that's pretty it spot on. It, it sounds like something um, he would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I'm kind of torn between both of the sides because I've always been a let's kind of run to where angels fear to tread and then solve the problems of fixing new technology mm -hmm. while we're trying to figure out the new technology. But at the same time, it, it seems like another ratcheting of what made social media so toxic. Okay. So when we were, you know, sort of just coming into the internet and everyone was making their own website and you would go to a website to enter, to interact with their content, I feel like that was the most vibrant explosion of new forms of media. Yeah. And then social media came around and made it way easier to have a page on a platform rather than having to make your own website. And yeah. the platform could kind of wall garden your content. So the platform is benefiting from your creation, but you really aren't by getting more traffic or advertising or revenue to whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And now I kind of feel like AI chat is kind of the next phase of that where it, it can pull all of this information from the web and it's not giving me sources. What I need is Wikipedia GPT. Yeah, what I yeah, need yeah. is I'm in a chat with a wiki and the chat can give me conversational information from the information that's hosted on Wikipedia. And then in that reply, I get the little asterisks that say, I pulled this information from here. I pulled this information from here. I pulled this information from here. And that's Sources. how I came up with my conclusion. And yeah. that way, you know, no one will. It's not like people are digging through Wikipedia articles and clicking on all the references and stuff, but it's at least a token effort towards a, a magician never reveals his secrets, my friend. That's just, that, that, that's I think what gonna I don't like. No, no, I know, but I feel like that's what they're like going to be. It's, it's an illusion. You know, it's 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 not a real watch this hand while I take your no, sorry, watch this hand while I take your watch. Yeah, no, I know that, that's what it feels like. It feels it, like that a little kind bit of that of flashy, fun novel presentation, but it only exists to usurp the people that have actually done the work. Okay. So th that's just my knee jerk. But you remember we were we were sitting down and um, we were at the Surface launch. Yeah, and yeah. I really feel a lot of these companies have not done a very good job. I'm, I'm picking on Microsoft here, but this is true of every AI system that's going to be coming out, Bard included. Yeah, but I was going to talk about Bard was, a little bit, yeah. Microsoft was really stoked to show off these new creation tools. Like you can get a wholly original piece of clip art and use that in a project. And I asked them about licensing and rights and IP. Yeah, I was right next and to you. Yeah. No one, no one had an answer. They're like, who, who wait, hold owns on, wait, or license? who created licensing? this piece of content? What is that? And word? they came back and were like, oh no, 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 you can use it. It's free to use. And yeah. like, I understand that. But if the AI is creating something on behalf of Microsoft for a service that I'm paying into Microsoft to use, at some point, we're going to cross a bridge mm -hmm. where someone is going to claim ownership of or a piece of AI generated art is going to be so similar to a piece of human generated art that we have to question. There, there were at, who, at that time, I think. Owns what what what's being produced there there were some points at some point uh the way the ai was running that it didn't even realize that it was pulling people like at some point you would see people's um like tags and certain art like characteristic that are specific to the images that it pulled from um and i mean we saw another one too i mean qualcomm is trying to put in um 
uh, stable diffusion on their device. They demonstrated yeah. it um, at, at MWC running on a Qualcomm reference device and in sure. like literally 15 yeah. seconds creating cute warrior kitties and, and Dragon Ball characters dancing the hoe, uh, you know, having a hoe down and all of that. I don't know why I asked it there, but I, I was like, I was very I'm trying to be very unique, like on Dragon Ball dancing to like, you know, at a hoe down or something like that. And then it, sure. it gave me Dragon Ball wearing boots and, and you know, all of that. So, uh, I mean, it, it, it was it was unique. So the 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 AI portion that I'm really more focusing on, uh, and I realized that there, obviously there's the images. We all love the Pope in the in the poofy jacket. I think that was a classic. Right. You have to admit he would look really good in so many of those other AI generated images. And I think you know we definitely need that that new uh, what's it called the fall fall collection uh, from the yeah. Pope. You know, uh, I mean, if the Pope's not walking the runway, I mean, ha we have failed as a species. I like I feel like he's, he's I, I feel like they've it. tapped into something there. You know what I mean? Like right. there are some other he has ones. An amazing collection of hats. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I think he rocks those hats. But we need the right jacket yes. to finish the ensemble. Exactly. Um, I'm I'm more focusing on on the so like so there is obviously a, there there is the conversational uh, you know you know write me a, a, a um, you know a, a song or in the in the style of Eminem and Tupac that they were mm -hmm. singing together or something like those are the interesting things that you know people you have to kind of get a little bit creative to ask to throw those questions at it for me the way I've been at least for my side for with managing my channel so I, I use a service called VidIQ and this is by no means an ad for VidIQ and they announced you know, some some new tools recently yeah well so yeah and, and they've had within the last I, I want to say before ChatGPT started making the big push and so on, they've had AI built-in tools into their tool set, into the vidIQ tool. I don't know if it's available at every tier, but at least in the one that I have, where, like, let's say, you, and if for any creator that's using it, if you ever had to post a video, you're always going to do, you're going in there, you're trying to figure out basically, you know, how to put in, uh, you know, the description, the tags, and sure. all of the things that you're trying to do in there. They've had an AI tool built in there that will write an introduction paragraph into your video. Like that little description that you typically will have to put about the video. Yeah. And it's been there for a few months. And I actually kind of, I mean, it's not the best. Like when it, it writes, gets it, it, started it, it gets faster. you started to the point. Yeah. And it it does save me at least a 20 minute trying to figure out what I'm going to put in there. Because it gives me the structure. And all I have to do is go fix it. It's much mm. easier than having to create the structure. Especially when you're posting and you're late. And it's it's in the evening, like we've done it in the past but with like some of these launches. We're in the middle of the night waiting in there. We're trying to do all of that. So I've, I've used this service and that is an AI based tool that uses information that's publicly available and it uses certain keywords and writes the paragraph in that referencing that and, data. And, and Microsoft is going to be building tools like that into office. So yeah, and, I, and, and we well, so is so is Google too as well. I think that's what one of the other yeah. things they talked about there, uh, the workplace, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where I was referencing using Bard and different things like that, because in an example, so. Samsung announced or made the announcement yesterday uh, that they they started the pre-order uh, uh, for the A54 5G. It's starting to come out to the yeah. U.S. You could pre-order it, get it in the April 6th, all the good stuff. I got the piece of note. I got the, the press release, and I, I wanted to put something out really quick, but I didn't have time to put it together. That was the key for me. Is like I needed to do something in literally less than five minutes, but I did not want to sit there and try to spend that much time writing a paragraph, specs, you know, all that. I went sure. into Bard and I said, "Introduce the A54 5G to me in a in an in a paragraph." I got what I wanted. The data was factual. <laughs> I double checked it. Right. And then after that, I said, "Give me the best. Give me a specifications of the A54 5G." Bam! I got the specs. And right. then I plopped in my link at the end of it. And I'm not trying to make it sound like this was. It, it, it's the easiest. This is me copying out. I, it should have taken me longer to do all of that. But in a crunch. And for a piece that I don't think is like a very critical piece, this is just literally a news announcement. So to me, it wasn't really like an editorial of me right, reviewing a product. Sure. Um, it was just mostly stating factual information that's posted directly on Google's, uh, right. either on the search or whatever. So long story short, I'm finding tools like that with the AI for me that do end up basically helping us in the long run, mm -hmm. saving times, multitasking, reducing the, the turnaround of certain things for me without necessarily creating content from there it's basically aggregating the content for me and that's what i wanted what i'm what i've been using it more so and i leverage that with vidiq and uh the bard which seems to be for me at least working a lot better than chad for me as far as yeah. quick response time and, and i think that brings up a, a, an interesting situation that we'll have to start quantifying what is the value of human created I mean, so I, I pull it up pulled it up earlier but oliver posted human generated art sounds dystopian af and what we're going to have yeah. a conversation about what is the value of human generated content 
Yeah. I feel like a lot of us have been in a position where it's like, I get another press release. What am I going to say about this press release? What value is there in me regurgitating the announcement of a product to be launched in this market in a couple months and like telling you what's already in the press release? And, and I was talking to an editor and he was bringing up all these things about like, not just AI enhanced mm -hmm. editing tools for video, but he's like, you know, there are whole jobs in post-production where you spend time like painting people in and out of frames and doing all this really like tedious work. And you're like, that's all gonna go away. There are already some really good tools that not only streamline that, but give mm -hmm. those that kind of proficiency to someone who doesn't have the expertise in doing that kind of editing. He was like really excited about how stock photography will probably die. Because it's like, yeah, let me just pull it up on my phone. I need candles and roses for a Valentine's Day photo. How many candles and roses does a real human photographer need to go and shoot for that content to have any value? So now if someone picks up a camera, hopefully it's with an artistic vision or some kind of merit. But at the same time, the flip side of this and, and something that, you know, like Michael Peppertech is bringing up and um, I, I think a, a Michael Corcoran is bringing up quotes from Noam Chomsky in the chat mm -hmm. is the only reason the AI can do these things is because humans did do all of that tedious labor. Oh, that's and true. now when we disrupt, see the, 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 the fear I have, what you're describing is a beautiful idea of a co-pilot. Right? Absolutely, we all want yeah. someone that can help guide the content crea creation and the production process. There's mm -hmm. a lot of tedium in that, that I don't want to have to focus the same amount of energy as the, the fun creative stuff. Yeah, yeah. when, when you have time, to be multi in multiple places at one as a single creator. Every video is an exercise in writing I, and shooting yeah. and editing and hosting and presenting and distributing and, cross and marketing and, and, yeah, and exactly, advertising and website maintenance, everything. You have to be everything. And mm -hmm. we, we don't exist at a tier where we have division of labor of that. So if I can turn to an AI tool to take a few of the more tedious bits off my plate, that's great. But yeah. I fear a, unless unless Disney gets really pissed off about AI, AI is going to be one of those software forces that consolidates power and wealth mm -hmm. to whoever operates and manages the AI. And all of those, those tedious tasks that were done by humans before are gonna get disrupted, yeah. but it's not like we're gonna find corollary jobs just to kind of give to them. It's like, you've gotta learn new tool sets. If you were an editor in a post-production facility, mostly focused on rotoscoping, well, that job is eventually gonna get taken over by AI and the company that runs the AI is gonna make more money for running the AI and this human mm -hmm. is now sort of displaced. And I think the only thing that's gonna, it's weird, like, I don't wanna be celebrating the rat. I don't wanna like, oh, but Disney, come please save us, big daddy media conglomerate that soaks up all of my <laughs> other favorite studios. Yeah, yeah. But the only thing that might put a hamper on that is if AI gets too good at democratizing production. So like yeah. five years from now, if I go to Bard and I say, using the likeness of Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Tom Holland, write me a different ending scene to end game <laughs> where the two characters get to express more about how they feel about each other. Each other. Oh and it's my God. near photo realistic and I can just create that based off of Disney's IP, Disney's gonna freak out. Oh, absolutely. Disney's gonna flip their ish. So the the pushback right now we're we're charging in we're angels fear to tread like i said I, I like disruptive technologies that can kind of help us reframe and think about um media in a different way but it's immediately going to run headlong into the interests of mega corporate entities mm -hmm. huge 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 mega corporations and, and there's almost like a cory i don't know if anyone in here is a fan of cory doctorow but if you if you aren't like read through some of his writings, he's very prolific about like fair use and right to repair and uh, um, net neutrality and topics mm -hmm. like that. But his novels are actually really fun, like young adult novels too. Yeah. Little Brother is still one of my favorite books, um, just on like disruption and and uh, appropriate counterculture uh, protesting. Um, once we kind of push into that era, the big fight isn't going to be. Unfortunately, the fight is never gonna be, people are displaced, their jobs have been taken away, they're not making as much money and we have to help fix the economy. No yeah. one's gonna care. Disney's gonna say, 
oh no, you're infringing our IP, and a whole bunch of politicians are going to freak out. <laughs> well, no, they're they're dealing with, they're dealing with their own thing in Florida right now with politicians trying to it. control some of their stuff too. Yeah, yeah that's only even and, not and, even close. And boy, howdy, did Disney play that well? This is not a politics podcast. I but man, no, 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 sorry. And then the yeah. GOP got. <laughs> schooled by disney yeah. lawyers on that one. <laughs> oh my god um, i was sorry yeah it was crazy yeah <laughs> like, it, it, like though, again, this is just, why i i understand when you say when disney gets happen. upset yeah yeah it's like it, it's like so yeah that, it's, that's uh... gonna be when the real test of ai happens it's not when artists and writers and musicians have their livelihoods infringed upon by ai soaking up all of their creative endeavor and spitting out reasonable facsimiles I, what, yeah. Once the, the big purse is hit over at Disney, then we're going to see some attempt at trying to rein in or categorize or restrict the movements of AI. And I think and we're what, still probably what, where a couple it's years able to away from in. that. Yeah. But no, it's I... going to happen faster than I think Disney executives are, are going to be able to react to. Or yeah, plan well, because to get ahead of. Yeah, because because I, I think there are still some challenges with AI and the way things, especially if, if I'm not mistaken, faces, human faces, it still has a lot of hard time, especially if you're not pulling from a, a well-known person. Like if you're put like you know with the Pope image, obviously that was a perfect example. You know his he he has images and videos of him of him all over the internet, all over the all over everything. Like he's, it's literally he's very much. There's so much data on him to be able to create content. It's much easier. But example, I think um, uh, Cheryl from, um, I want to say, I don't know if she's Engadget, Cheryl, um, oh man, Cheryl Lynn. I forgot, I forgot what the publication she works for, but she tried putting in uh, a request to try to put an image of saying, show me a pictures of Cheryl Lynn flying a plane and the plane and the person on it, the body, everything was fine, but the face was all messed up. Like it couldn't figure out how to translate that into a content in creation. Hands. AI yeah. always messes up. Hands. Oh yeah. It's like extra fingers or less reason. fingers or like two hands going in. Like, so I, you're right. We're still some, some point, some time away from that, that content to be fully, you know, a concern to, to Papa Disney or Mama Disney. And, um, and always love it's the it's my Xiaomi. Sorry. Uh, I forgot to put it on <laughs> sound. I thought I had it on off, but either way, um, so long story, yeah, for me, it's been more about using it as a co-pilot. It's me using it as a tool that lets us uh, have that extra person that can be like, you know, okay, well, here's a draft of what I think this should look like. Go in and edit it. And like you said, it takes about five minutes less, uh, more or less time to be able to get it and put it up there. And it is like you said, like, what can I put into this content from an, uh, a, a press briefing that I don't have the device. I don't have any reference information. It's not like I'm going to review it there. Um, and it was more so just making the announcement for people that may be interested in the a, the, the new A54 uh, and maybe getting like a deal or something to that effect. So that was primarily what my thing was. And my usage of BARD, I finally got access to it about a week or so ago. It extended the function that I already loved about vidIQ, but now puts it out into what I'm able to do to help me leverage some of that work in my on my website or stuff like that. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I, I've I've even asked it to write a response to uh, like one of those promotion emails that we get in the, in our inbox, and uh, it was not bad. It was it it was decent. I felt like it was too long, but it was like okay, <laughs> like I could use it. I could right. dwindle down. But um, so uh, that, I mean, yeah. This is this is where we're going to see, I think, some interesting experimentation. Yeah. Unfortunately, that inter interesting experimentation is going to be led by middle managers that are going to be celebrated for reducing costs at organizations like that, newsrooms. That, yeah, and, yeah, and I know. when, that's, when that's we talk about like it. how much effort and energy do you really care that we put into talking about a press release of a new phone launch, that's one thing. I I have a very I don't know how to properly express with words the mm -hmm. concern I have over journalists being replaced by data gathering assistant tools that reconfirm information that has already been put out into the public. And so, you know, we look at like BuzzFeed, I think was tagged for like a, a number of their articles were being written by AI and they were getting rid of human staff. And then they're like, oh no, we've gotten rid of too many people. How do we keep our, our, um, our, our publication producing content? Yeah. And that's BuzzFeed. I mean, they're a big site, but I also feel like the stakes on that are 
pretty low, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's not huge, but huge. we're going to see that effect and that ripple. Someone is walking into a respected newspaper or, or a respected news site, a Reuters, an AP, something like that. And they're saying, hey, you know, if we take a couple of these articles out of the hands of human authors uh, with the information that other people publish, we can just create an AI template based on that. Mm -hmm. And then it's just going to be AIs filtering the content produced by other AIs to produce the same content on topics that we already know about. That's not good for journalism. That's really bad for news. Um, and I feel like that's going to spread to other industries too, where it's the outcomes will probably not be as dire, but will still be less desirable. Yeah. And I don't know how we fix that if and when it happens and bad things happen because of it. And yeah, that, that's no. the the sort of existential dread that I have. Is... There, there is, there's the. You're right, it, and it, and I think in in many ways. Yeah, that, that is something that I think we need to keep in mind and, and focus on the fact that this is, it's a potential, I mean, it's a disruptor because I, think about it, if every company does that and there's nobody writing the original content, then the, the AI is going to have a hard time creating its own realistic one, right? Because it then is like, well, where do you put it from? Do you pull it straight off of the, the, the press release? And then all you're doing is regurgitating exactly what the company that made the announcement and, originally well, on And it. in the short term, exactly what Michael Corcoran is saying is- yeah humans are going to produce the initial wave of content and then a whole army of bots and AI are going to absorb that content and produce low cost mm -hmm. rejoiners. And that, that system is going to be real fast. So uh, a beloved celebrity passes away and the Hollywood reporter gets the scoop from the, um, from the team of the, the, the actor or actress mm -hmm. and they put out an initial hey, this is the press release and this is what the family has said and we're really sad that this actor has passed. And within seconds, that's going to get hit by AI. An army of bot yeah, exactly. And, an, and another, another less reputable <laughs> Hollywood publication is going to run their own version of that same story. Oh, absolutely. Without having to pay for reporters, without having mm -hmm. to invest in the relationships between reporters and newsrooms and, um, and, and Hollywood agents and managers. Yep. It, like none of that actual legwork is going to be, the costs of that are going to be on the less reputable publication, but they're still going to get to benefit from it. Of course. Yeah. And if they're real savvy, they'll be able to kind of push that out at scale using bots and other services too. So they can be a direct competitor against a mainstream publication with very little investment and with very little um, uh, staff to yeah. compete against the more reputable version of this reporting. And so eventually it's going to be an erosion effect. Like how do you keep a newsroom going if you put in the effort and you put in the money and you put in uh, all of the, uh, the resources mm -hmm. to generate this content, if nearly immediately an AI can hoover up all of, that inf all of that information and regurgitate something similar, and that's also being distributed at scale. It's, it's a massive, massive issue when we talk about that kind of reporting. I don't think any of us care if we're talking about a Galaxy A54 press release. No, no, absolutely. That, that we, 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 need to, we need to be able to quantify the scale of harm. Yeah. There is no harm because it's a press release. Like it's the whole point a, yeah. of the press release was take this information, condense it in a way that makes sense for you and regurgitate it out to people so people know about the Galaxy A54. Yeah, and That's that was not worldwide. a problem. But if it's, here's this uh, hard hitting investigative journalism piece about fentanyl and then a local newspaper goes, okay, chat GPT, take that article and make a version for us. Then all of the people that did all of that research and investigative reporting and working with law And this is also where sources, yeah, yeah. Room, this is where your sources also kind of like, it's thrown out the door. That, you don't know where it's coming from. All of that get, just, just gets dumped. And yeah. again, it would be a little bit better. It wouldn't fix this problem, but it would be a little bit better if Bard or chat GPT said, in creating this media, I have drawn from these sources. And I don't know that you can make that a law. I, I don't know that we have politicians- Show us your work. <laughs> to, do, we, to do the regulation need, on that. Law, we, need a, we need to a be, teacher to, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with but, you. but it needs to be like, um, it needs to be encouraged as just a good way to do business mm -hmm. in the way that Wikipedia is cited as a source because they do a good job of cataloging references to the content on Wikipedia. 
we there, there's no law that mandates Wikipedia has to do this. It's the community at Wikipedia to say to make Wikipedia more trustworthy, we are including where we got this information for this article. And and that I think just needs to be kind of the goodwill token for mm -hmm. AI is yeah. You, if you show us your work and you know, we know where you got this information from, I will feel better trusting the information coming from the it's chat a, bot. Or right now I've got to go and just look up this information on my own. If it's specs on the Galaxy A54, that's easy. Yeah. If it's political donors and campaign contributions in 2020 and we want to figure out who was doing something shady with a super PAC, I'm not going to trust what a chat bot has no, to no. say about that. Where did Absolutely. they get its information from? You have to categorize the, the the content, the importance of it, and the validity and and the work that needs to be showcasing. Like you said, show us your work to be able to reference it. And that's how these hard, hard hitting articles will definitely do that because they show their work. They reference where they got their information and how they did the research and who they talked to and all of that information. Um, we we still need to see how things kind of kind of develop a little bit more as well uh, on that. But I did want to actually touch base uh, before we get to only because we're getting into that hour and five minute time. Um, <laughs> we, you kind of hinted at it at, at the beginning of the video, uh, the chat when we started talking about mm -hmm. the whole uh, potential losing functionalities like VPNs being in, uh, in, infringed on yeah. uh, or access to use or if you use a VPN to access a certain uh, that. That when I started seeing that and reading that, that that was a scary concept, and how that was actually put into the that that same bill that's trying to ban TikTok, and limiting the ability of being able to use you know virtual private networking to be able to you know remove certain restrictions that are geo based basically that's primarily what it is, um, you know the ability of watching you know all of Dragon Ball in Japanese and all of those available on Netflix in Japan because in the U.S. Netflix doesn't release it but in Japan you can watch all of it in Japanese. Uh, yeah, you know, to, to be, you know, kind of a, one of the reasons why I would have used uh, a VPN or even, uh, you know, using a VPN when you're traveling into other countries, like, you know, you land in China and you have to use a VPN to be able to even use Google services uh, or things like that. Uh, but that that to me was a little bit um, like the the approach on how they were doing it and the, the the penalties that they were trying to levy on like fines and how they'd be able to basically put that much fear of God in people so that they cannot use these type of services. Uh, yeah, I don't well, know. And, and for it to be to, for it to be uh, sort of written as specifically with the punishments, but as vague or as broad about how we uh, might interact uh, with different. Corporations. Yeah, like how so, how how would they? What what? what so yeah, I, exactly. I want to I want to highlight this. I'm, I'm going to yeah. go back into screen share here for just a second because I, no, no. I always like patting myself on the back. I don't know if no. I, I, I don't give myself enough credit. So I, I'm very clever. I, I, so. I, I always thought of you as like a very humble person. I've never, exactly. no, this, is, this is shocking me right now. I'm the most humble, humble person. That, I need that a few minutes might, uh, might to, to just think about this. So we recently did the TikTok hearing, right? Yeah. Uh, CEO of TikTok goes before a congressional uh, board and answers ridiculous posturing questions from very disingenuous and somewhat hypocritical uh, uh, politics. And so what um, this, this I wrote this on the discord mm -hmm. uh, March 23rd. Okay. And so following the hearing and how horrifically off the pulse and tone deaf so many of the politicians questions and replies and grandstanding works so often it would be like, I'm not even really asking this person questions. They're under oath, but I'm really just using this to posture and to soapbox and to make it look like I'm being real tough on the TikTok. Yeah. So, um, number one, hype up the real harms of social media because there are real harms. TikTok no, no, absolutely. is, I, I don't feel, I don't feel conflicted about banning social media like TikTok. I just want it to not be hypocritical. If you're upset about TikTok, anything that you do legislative through the legislative body should also impact Amazon and Facebook and Google and yeah. Twitter and YouTube all the other social media companies. So if you find something objectionable about TikTok, and I feel TikTok is the most weaponized version of this concept, but we can also thank Facebook for creating a market where that was healthy. Yeah. But you, so then what we do while we're trying to scare people about how TikTok is different, we're railing on the evil communism, the evil Chinese communism of social media. And TikTok yeah. is, is different because China, okay. 
I'm sure there are, so I actually do agree that there are some fine differences between TikTok reporting user information directly to their government. Mm -hmm. I feel like the only difference between TikTok and Facebook is the extra step where our law enforcement bodies technically have to buy that information from Facebook. So Facebook doesn't just give it to them because that's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's even a little bit worse. Facebook will sell your information to law enforcement. So your tax dollars go towards law enforcement getting your information from Facebook. Okay, that, that's a problem for me. Step three, try some token, token effort to ban TikTok in the USA, but those efforts will fail due to the favorable legislation granted, by, granted to massive corporations in the USA. The structure of TikTok in the USA complies with our practically non-existent regulations for tech companies. So TikTok is structured in a way that it is a legal entity that can operate in the United States. So mm -hmm. then step four, Congress will cry about how their hands are tied and they can't do anything because anything that would rein in TikTok in our Rain. current legislative organization would also put a hurt on Google and Facebook and even Apple to some degree. So mm -hmm. then step five, Congress will pivot to protect the children and the regulations that shield those and attack the regulations that shield those companies. They're going to see this as an effort to go against the Communications Decency Act, specific, specifically Section 230. Mm -hmm. They're going to try and frame it as some kind of national security issue that relates only to companies that come out of certain parts of the world and try and limit that, that uh, communication. So now what we've got is a poison pill. Well, if you're going to talk to a company that does business in China, um, that's against the law. And if you use something that circumvents our block on talking to a company in China, that's also against the law. And so now their attack on VPNs is horrifically insidious. And all of this is ridiculously disingenuous. Social media has been long overdue regulatory action on how they use user, user data. Mm -hmm. But this, this notion of, we're going to ban TikTok. You're not. Because you can't without hurting Facebook and without hurting Google. So now instead it's, we're going to take away all of a user's tools to maintain their privacy online so that your information isn't stolen by TikTok is the worst, most disingenuous take on user data and, and security and privacy that I've ever seen. This is horrifically, uh, horrific hypocrisy. And I called it a week before it happened. So a that's just why I'm, I'm, I'm patting you're, you're, myself on the back. No, no, I, I have I, it I in not. writing. You have it's it in writing. Discord. It's on, <laughs> it's on the discord. No, I, 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 am with you on, uh, honestly, the, yeah, it, I, I think the reality is the ability of banning something like TikTok is, is, I, and I, and I never want to say it's too big to fail kind of thing because we've seen things in the past, things can fail and things can go yeah. wrong. T but TikTok the reality could become another music Ali or vine or something like yeah. that. It can wane at some point or I... another, there is going to be a transition from one medium to another, but sure. the, con the, the concern right is. now, yeah, whatever. I mean, at some point the tastes change, people behavior change. It's, I'm not saying that it's, it's inevitable that it's going to be basically there forever. The, the, the concern that I had with it war was the it's just the, the way the man the company itself manages itself in in its own territory tiktok is not the way the tiktok we know like even yeah. even they realize that they shouldn't be providing this much i don't like the fact that i can have a 30 minute to a 30 minute or so like time warp where i'm in the middle i'm in the beginning of shooting a video and i suddenly stupidly open up a tiktok because i got like a friend or somebody sending me a tiktok and i'm like uh, and I'm not saying that you are, but I'm saying like, you know, I get it and I click it. And then, then that one opens into two, three, four. And then I have like that time warp. And um, it, it's a, it's a challenge. I think the, 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 the the drive that the, the a company like TikTok or even Google or even Facebook have to have more on on site time, on site engagement, on site. yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's the biggest thing that uh, what's driving all of these conversations that people like you having all these conversations on that. And this is where you it's like, can you just take this away and everybody's going to be happy? No, all and all of all of the kids that, that that you're messing with are going to grow up and they're going to remember who did this to them and just remember that you know I'll, I'll you know like, like I hope remember. so. 
remember I TikTok? Mean, I'm like, yeah. We've I'm like, no, some, some don't Gen remember. Some Zers TikTok. getting real, real active in uh, in in protests and kind of counterculture movements. And and yeah. I think the thing that, again, I, I want to single out that TikTok has taken the <coughs> excuse me, uh, TikTok has taken the next step and has further weaponized this type of distraction machine. Yeah. And we've seen it impact every other social media site. Now every site wants to get into this disposable short form video content. Oh yeah, everybody's because like, let me copy it. YouTube used to favor long form content because they wanted time on site. But now if you just have a constant stream of cotton candy and especially girls dancing is always gonna win you a huge audience on whatever yeah. platform you're on. Now you can keep someone on site longer with these smaller, tinier, easier to um, to distribute videos. And so TikTok is special in that they've taken that one step further. But the thing that, again, like we had politicians and uh, I, I don't know that I can recommend people watch that, that hearing because it's painful. It, we were watching it on the Discord and it was just God awful. It was so difficult to get through that presentation and that that uh, uh i forget what you call that cross examination i guess oh yeah um but one of the things that we we have done a miserable job of correcting for in our society is the policy of social media companies to keep you on site they are actively engaged in experimenting with your brain mm -hmm. this is this has been very clearly documented in a number of ways. As soon as a site goes from chronological publication to categorized and uh, algorithmically sorted mm -hmm. content distribution, they are tinkering with the metrics of what will keep you on their site longer. And, and we, we acknowledge that when money is involved, that's bad. The, the Las Vegas Gambling Commission won't let you change the payouts and slot machines in real time because you could keep someone hooked. You could like dish out just enough positive reinforcement on a couple wins here to keep them pumping cash into a slot machine. We recognize that that is a harm to the gambling industry, let alone a harm to the individuals that interact with the gambling industry. Yeah. Our politicians are not savvy enough to go after social media for the same mechanic. And what we saw through disclosure on Facebook was, Facebook knows if it serves you content that will make you angry and make mm -hmm. you afraid, you will stay on Facebook longer. You will be miserable on Facebook, you but stay on. Facebook, you stay on Facebook longer. That's appealing yep. to their advertisers. They get more ad revenue, they get more money. That is a benefit to Facebook. And, and politicians tried bringing up stuff like, it doesn't take long in a viewer's behavior to get served some really disgusting and objectionable content on TikTok. Like it doesn't take long at all. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the YouTube dumpster dive, right? Like how many videos does it take before you're getting served like pure fascism, you know, like in your feed? No, no, it, it's not it, that it, hard, it, it, but, it, it but TikTok that. takes that even further. Yeah. And, and it, it's even more aggressive to that degree. It, it'll, it knows the pattern, it knows what you're like, and it keeps feeding you that content. And then every once in a while, it'll throw in an upsetting piece. Something that was totally out of left field, that had no reference into any of the other stuff, just to see the reaction. Yeah. And if it interests you, and then if you even remotely interact with it, your whole algorithm reshifts and is like, oh, wait a minute, we can keep them longer here. Don't get me wrong. I... I I, I mean, I, I fall for it and I, I'm not going to say that I, I've never, I haven't used it sometimes when I just, I'm sitting there waiting, but the, the reality when I look at it at, at, at some point or another, we need to have, um, the biggest thing about it is, is the data sharing or content or analytics and so on. We, we do not opt in to share our data in the U S we have our data shared out of, out of, out of, by auto mode and you have to opt out. The option of not sharing your data is there. It's hidden in the settings section, but you need to be able to know that the data is being taken. Like when they, when they first activated the cookie conversation, everybody now knows what cookies are. Right. Because hey, every time second, I've, uh, Marie was doing some drop off and stuff. I'm going to be right back, but continue on that note. Oh yeah, no, no problem. I'm going to talk S23 stuff and all, all that good stuff. But the, the biggest thing that I think what I look at it at is, is how do we, you know, how do, how do we get to the point of we need to basically opt into things as opposed to just having to be opt in automatically and be needing to opt out of it? Cookies fixed the concern for us. And I think that was a big thing for us. And we now at least understand that you're able to limit some of the site information that you're able to share 
by default, like uh, when you're going into a site for the first time, out of, you know, basically, um, things like that always kind of frustrated me because you know in the in Europe it's not the same. In Europe, they've had yeah. better registration. They've been able to manage data privacy a little bit better, and they're able to do it on a on a on a countryside, on a global side. It's not uh, not global, but you know, on a, a region, on a, yeah. on a region side, where we just seem to feel like it's. Eh, you know, it has to reach a certain really bad point for us well, to kind of look at and, it. And 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 the the thing that I want to hold to is I, I think there was a benefit to some of the conversation that we used to have in sort of a faux libertarian stance. Mm -hmm. We want to see technology evolve. We don't want regulators hampering innovation. I mean, I feel like there is a fair part of that conversation. Yeah. But now we've let that go to a degree where when we, we can demonstrate harms to consumers and we can demonstrate um, un, unfashionable business practices taking place, we now don't have the regulatory teeth to do a good job of trying to rein that in. Yeah. And that, that becomes the problematic aspect of this, where you're bringing up, you know, like we've had some pretty decently effective regulations in the EU that we Americans have been able to benefit from. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, we, we're not, we, we do not have the capabilities or the commissions in place to take those frank and hard looks at consumer services in an era of big data. Yeah. And, and someone else mentioned, and I'm sorry, it's way l more distant in the chat, but we're basing a lot of our legal policy on television and radio broadcast and distribution, like the 1996 Telecommunications Act. That has mm -hmm. been updated over time. It's not like it stayed static as it was <laughs> originally installed in 1996. Was but... that the one that uh, split up the Pacific Bell? Uh, uh, no, that no, was... no, no, that was oh, that was a... that that, oh, that, yeah. that was different. Right. But yeah. I would say our tools in the regulatory space are a little outdated. That, that's the best way I could phrase. <laughs> oh no! It, just look at the questions that we were getting. Obviously, they, the, there wasn't enough research that were put uh, that were posted there, and a lot of a lot of that information is almost like personal questions. It's like you're stealing my data, right? You're stealing my data. I'm like, I'm like, come on, man, come up with more. Well, I mean, and, you, yeah. And and the, I and I want to show show highlight this because the messaging on this is critically important. So Michael Peppertech says, hence when why. <laughs> Hence why when Apple started to require allowing users to opt out of sharing data to apps, Facebook lost tons of money. But at the same time, Facebook, I mean, uh, Apple specifically targeted the main methods of data um, collection, data collection that Facebook used, but didn't do much else to stop anything else that was uh, leveraging PII or could also uh, fingerprint a device to a user. Mm -hmm. And now Apple apps and services don't use the same methods as Facebook did to collect user data, but your iPhone is sending an incredible amount of information on everything you do on that phone so that Apple can serve their own ads in their own services based on your behavior. And they can sell that at scale because they made it insular. It's very much like everything else in the modern era of Apple has been to take a competing service and then use the uh, distribution of Apple products to break the service. Like we don't talk about Tile anymore because people have AirTags. Well, Apple looked at that and said, hey, you know, we can kind of force everybody with an iPhone to participate in this location tracking where Tile has to get all these special permissions and you have to have the app and only other Tile members are going to contribute to that. If yeah. you want to find your iPhone, you're a part of the whole network for every single a a Apple accessory out there. So Apple can distribute that at scale. Same yep. thing with Facebook. Facebook is making a lot of money on our users' behavior. Why don't we block the main vector by which Facebook operates? And then even though it would technically violate the App Store terms of service that they have with developers, Apple can do things with their own apps that they wouldn't allow their competitors to do with their apps, soaking up all of your user data and services are now the fastest area of growth at Apple. Their ad revenue oh, absolutely. is spike. Absolutely. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It, and it, it's crazy I mean, because, but it, it, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think that's the biggest thing with Apple uh, when you when you start getting into the Apple ecosystem and what they're doing is, they're, yeah, they're they're harvesting their own data. They're blocking other people from getting data from their devices and they're trying to get it more into, you know, how, do, well, Apple does it better. Uh, the, the, <laughs> yeah, you're, 
uh, seriously, Apple no, it, does it. Apple does it at scale. Apple it does, does it, it at scale, scale that no one else is allowed to. So I guess that is the, better. I don't know if it's better. It it it, it does. The Apple machine does provide um, more awareness, and then it is because once Apple adopts something, like you said, like the AirTag killing the mm-hmm. tile kind of kind of conversation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Who's talking about tiles? Who who here knows what tiles are? And well, I've and tested tile, tiles. Tile yeah. was put into such a bad spot that they ended up selling to a company that was basically a user data broker. Yeah, and I don't want that. No, I don't think no, no, and, do and you don't want you don't want any of that. No, no, exactly. <laughs> um, the the biggest thing that I would probably say is, yeah, d- d- data is the biggest farm right now. Um, oh, yeah. you know, uh, Twitter but, but... going in there and, and then <laughs> trying to put in it. You know, they're trying to aggregate your interests, and then they're starting to put. People that you haven't even followed, you haven't even yeah. looked at in your timeline. And then suddenly, like, you're like, well, so I'm not what, subscribed. What's funny is Facebook did it quietly. Facebook yeah. was sneaky about making you miserable. Elon Musk is just like, no, nah, I'm going to piss you off. Yeah, no, like well, today, about yeah, yeah, like today's the last day, I think, for people that had original check marks uh, on, on mm-hmm. Twitter. And now you have Goodbye. to pay to get your check mark. Yeah, now you have to be, my, but, you know, my check mark's gone and I'm not going to be sad about it. That's, you got to be, you know, fine by me. you don't have to be blue about it. Okay, bro. I mean, come on. You can just be cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I had to walk into that one. Um, but but no, to, that, so, to that point is this yeah. is the perfect time. Um, Shannon Morse snubs. Yo, on, snubs. On Twitter, yeah, yeah. But she's in town. But, well, not in town. She's in Southern California. Somewhere yeah. further south, uh, uh, and she's busy. But yeah, I, I don't know. Normally, try to uh, reach out and say hey. But she just, I think, published this morning another roundup on privacy-focused web browsers. Oh, that's right. But yeah, yeah. Like I, saw, I didn't new, get a chance to watch the it. New yeah. Policy. I, I was watching it while we were getting set up here, and it's it's great. Yeah. I mean, she's amazing. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but with good pros and cons on the different things, and I think the thing that really bothers me is we 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 start broaching this conversation, and there's like a, an apathy. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, we're all exhausted. So first of all, I'm, I'm not blaming anyone. We're tired and this stuff sucks. And we can keep fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. But every time we lose ground, we don't get it back, right? We only need to slip a little bit for them to kind of get their claws into the next phase of whatever is going to be objectionable. Exactly. But we still have all of these great tools. And while we have these great tools, we should be using them. Like I, I, I'm a Firefox stan and I've got Firefox ratcheted pretty hard on certain types of ad blockers, whitelisting certain kinds of content, containers for every site that I'm in so that I'm trying my best on Firefox to kind of firewall off data from one service to another. All of Mm -hmm. my tabs have different little colors on them. Um, On top of that, I am using VPNs and I'm going to be investing in uh, hardware keys for 2FA. I mean, all of those things, we can still do all of that stuff. It's just, oh, but I'm used to Chrome. Like, well, if you don't like the policy that Google is going to push out for tracking user data and eliminating cookies, but then kind of identifying you even more directly to your browsing behavior, why not try Brave? Why not try Firefox? Actually, Brave is, it, Brave is a very good uh, substitute for Chrome. If you like Chrome, you, Brave is pretty good. You go good. and you take the mobile version of that, and Firefox has replaced a lot of the apps that I used to use. So I, I, I genuinely believe the best YouTube viewing experience is through a browser, not through the YouTube app. Mm-hmm. And if you want more control over that, if you want to reduce like some of your data costs, if you want to play with the background audio on and you can leave your screen off, those types of benefits, like go get Firefox. That works real good. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a better, I think it's a better experience than trying to do that in, Chrome. in the YouTube app. So, oh, right, so, so yeah. oh, I mean, and, and not just with Chrome, but I mean, genuinely from the app that's purpose built to do that, I'm kind of mm-hmm. tired of like, I've got dozens and dozens of services that are all these little apps that are really just web browser pages. So I, I've been trying to whittle back on well, yeah, Instagram is a software good example that as well. exists. Yeah. Exactly. And now yeah. Instagram is even breaking it further. If you try to scroll through someone's feed, like, oh, no, if you want to see any more of their photos, you've got to do it in the Instagram app. And you're like, well, that just kills my interest in using Instagram. You know who doesn't do that to me? Flickr. <laughs> I can do anything I want on Flickr yeah. um, because I'm old. But, but that, that to me is it, it requires some change in behavior. I don't expect my aunts and uncles to put that much care and that much attention and that much focus into crafting their web browsing etiquette. Unfortunately, I feel like that ship has sailed. But yeah. I'm talking to other tech enthusiasts and i feel like if anyone can suffer 
the learning curve on switching from Chrome to Brave or from Chrome to Firefox just to try out something that might be a little bit more privacy focused, it's someone who claims to be enthusiastic about technology. And that's what kills me is when I see like, oh, they're going to get your data anyway. But why make it easy for them? Why roll over when yeah. you genuinely will get a better experience when you tailor fit it to your needs and it'll be better for your privacy? And that's what kills me is like, no, nah, but I'm just kind of used to this. So it's going to turn into garbage and I'll just keep using it is never a great defense in, no. in the hobbyist space. Like that's that's bad. We should push back against the techies that are just like, oh, you can't can't do anything, I guess, because we can we still can and while we still can we should we should and you should like i mean the same way we we recommend you know using different phones and different things um it, it's you need to know what your options are and i think uh snubs does a really good job especially when it comes to privacy especially with the last um few i'm not gonna say a few days but like within the last uh, week or so we've seen so many not a lot but like at least a few channels that have basically been compromised their access to data to them has been compromised due to cookies uh, and always on connected uh, connectivity that uh, and just how 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 easily i'm not gonna say how easy but it is quite simple on how it was you know, how it was how the data was man was mined and captured that was the the crazy part it all it takes yeah. is one little thing that you didn't really think about twice and you open up and you run something and you're like, crap. Marie just got hit by another phishing, phishing scheme. And it, she was like, as I was clicking on the link, I I knew, you know, it's like you're in the action of hitting it. And then she went, oh, no. no. <laughs> this is where you take and, the and computer. I've been, getting, you, yeah. I've been getting tons of, uh, we have detected copyrighted content on your Instagram and that has violated our laws. Like the worst English translation of Some, a phishing yeah. hacking for Instagram. And I've been getting scores of those. Like I'm getting yeah. several a day it, um, and, and flagging them all, but it's like, they're still gonna keep coming. It's it, the crazy part that I see is it's the, the approach to they're getting creative and that uh, they're they're trying to leverage whatever people will be able to do and that i think that was the biggest thing for me the the, the ease of how it happened even for a company like uh, even for a site like you know linus tech tips i mean how how it was captured yeah. and how all of that was done um but even like a, a general uh, a friend of our of mine at least uh, i've had a chance to see him as well a few times uh ben ben um Genskin, and mm -hmm. he got the same thing they were trying to reach out to him via you know twitter and they're sending packages and then they're sending them a rar file like who sends a rar file with content from like you know and then and then they blame it like that's where it, it was a it funny funny I, tweet to read I, I yeah test, i i test file compression using rar uh um, yeah but it, i mean it, like you know what i mean it's so silly but the only reason i do is because it's the only first party app, app that functions similarly between android and windows so I don't use RAR. I use Seven Zip. I, yeah, I, use I think well, no, we, for my compression, but zip, zip I, file, I test zip, it. That's the only thing I, I, I the, do. The 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 zip RAR. protocol has been integrated to both Windows and uh, and Apple products and everything. So for yeah. the most part, if you get a zip file, you can you can decompress that file anywhere. Natively, don't have a problem. Natively, yeah, yeah. We else, no longer yeah. need to download WinZip if you remember WinZip. But the yeah. only reason why is like you can do a direct head to head comparison. Anyone who wants to test the file compression performance of your phone. Um, you, you get WinRAR and you get RAR Lab. And they're made mm -hmm. by the same company and they will output information in the same way. So you can yeah. see how much, how much data you're compressing per second. Um, and how fast is, you're able to like, turn it on mobile over. Yeah. That's all I use RAR for. <laughs> but by, because of that, I can point to you and I can point to this and say like, hey, if you have a Snapdragon 888, it is roughly as performant in file compression as a mobile Intel Core i7. Oh, right. set I, absolutely, and I and I think it's the biggest thing that we keep in mind is it's we're you know we are holding P, you know computers and PCs and our devices uh, in in our pockets, yeah. uh, and the reality is it just runs a different version or a different OS and it's a slightly smaller form factor. Um, but the 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 security part of it that I've been like the crazy part, I mean, because we get a thousand emails a day. I, I, we're not going to say a thousand. I mean, I, I get at least like 10 to 12 emails overnight. Every time I wake up in the morning, I have that many sitting there waiting for me. Um, I, and I'm not going to lie. Ever since I put out that, uh, 
that that scooter for ultra from from xiaomi every scooter and bike company that makes scooter or bikes are sending me emails because they somehow mm -hmm. you know what i mean like they're like hey he he has a really mm -hmm. good video on that let me just see if he got a little review hours so it's crazy like when you start getting the end you have to be careful who is real who's not yeah. who's all that information and and so to me it's yeah, uh, and this is our. I mean, and to some people, I'll say this: to some people, YouTube is their livelihood. Yeah, it it's not like for the way I do it, where YouTube for me is is more of a side hustle. Because to me, this is you know, like I I don't I worry enough about it that it is a very much a concern for me on a daily basis that I make that one mistake and suddenly all I've worked on I'm like chasing it to try to get it back. But like um, other creators have been hit with it, people that I know, people that I've worked with before. So it's concerning. That's what I said. That's what I'm saying. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, watch Shannon's video on um, on the two FAs and, and the ability of using basically keys, physical mm -hmm. keys to be able to secure a connection to a server. Also, if you haven't done this before for a while and you're on a Windows PC, log out of your accounts, log out of your Google accounts on Chrome and log back in. It's a pain, but it resets all your, all your cookies. Just yeah. don't don't keep everything because we we just get used to it, right? We do we use sure. it for so long, we don't think about it. And I love the fact that I can open up and my Chrome is already on running in my my mm -hmm. Gmail, all of that. But you think about it, like it used to. I'll, I'll be honest. There is one button in YouTube Studio, not YouTube Studio, in in Gmail, that drove me crazy. And that button was whenever you try to switch from multiple accounts, there is a proximity between. Switch account to log out, and I think it's yeah. in Studio, if I'm not mistaken. The, and as the it Gmail. would open up the menu, you would go to click on it, and then it yeah. would finish, and then you're like, "Oh, I just uh, logged out of everything." Yeah, well, and, and so it, it it and it does it on everything. Like it drives me crazy. Now I kind of but appreciate you know, that mistake a little bit because but, it happens to me you, more often. Do you know why that doesn't happen to me anymore? Because you use Firefox? No, I'm just kidding. I, because I use Firefox, and oh, in I, Firefox, sorry, I was I put every single Google account into its own separate container. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there's, there's never the whole tab switching between. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, but, yeah. oh, it's real nice. I like that a lot. <laughs> I've fallen for that because muscle memory is is as good as you can as you can think about it. But sure. the fact of the matter is, different computers, different ratios, different aspect of it, depending on how you have it set up. I've logged out of my all of my accounts and what was like, and I've had to log back in for a single one. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to take too much long on this because I, I do I well, realize we're a little I feel over like the... we need to we need to kind of wrap this up too. Uh, yeah, because you've no, been no. you you finally been uh, kind of wrapping up some of your your first month coverage. I'm finally... writing a script for the camera performance. So oh, good, good, good. Hopefully that'll be out soonish. Soonish, um, yeah. But you can speak much more to well, having traveled with and used the Galaxy Note 23. The the biggest thing for me, at least that, that I wanted to push out for that is what well using it to because. I, I always wanted to lever, explain that the S23 Ultra or the Note 23 Ultra is not an everyday average phone. It is a phone that has a very specific performance per dollar ratio, but it also it's a very specific niche experience that mm -hmm. Samsung's trying to put out. It's not going to sell the most. It's not going to be the most. Uh, it is the most flashiest that Samsung will release from a from a glowing rectangle point of reference. But at the end of the day. Using it in the U.S. is one experience, but how do you travel with it when you land somewhere in, let's say, Europe, and you don't, you know, you want to be able to use eSIMs? The, the biggest thing that it kind of got me, which I don't know why, but some of the Chinese companies, or at least uh, like the Find X6 Pro and the Xiaomi 13 Pro, don't have eSIM support. Yeah, I don't know the, why. The the vivos don't either and yeah like, oh, and, and i'm like this would be perfect to like fire up a short term absolutely I, I landed in barcelona and the first thing i wanted to do with my xiaomi 13 pro because i wanted to kind of keep using it there um i wanted to use it with my uh, like i so i wanted to jump in it we, we both did a video on Eralo and eSIMs are very easy when you're traveling because I, I literally the moment you land you're on you're connected you're running Oppos and OnePluses do support them. Samsung supports them, but vivos and xiaomi's and um and, and i think realme's if i'm not mistaken they just don't have it which ended up making making it so that I ended up popping my SIM card into the Xiaomi 13. But the, the reason why I'm mentioning this is having that has service on uh, on a on a Samsung, having it on my Pixel, made a life changing experience for me because I was able to stay connected. I was able to use the devices I wanted to use, and the S23 Ultra and the Note 23 Ultra did a very good job. And I'm still working on that video. A lot of the content I showed in in this review video was those images that I posted on social media while I was traveling. I wasn't posting from the Find X6 Pro. We weren't allowed to share in images from there. So the content was very much leveraged there, connectivity, channel management, internet, uh, and, and then, of course, um, leveraging the ability of using DEX on uh, using on the next stock. That was a big thing for me. 
popping in there, connecting it to the next stock and using it. And I didn't realize that I was using it so much. My next stock was down to like 10% when I was trying to shoot the video and trying to get the B-roll. I'm like, dude, I almost killed the next stock. You know what I mean? Like I haven't had that happen before where my phone stays uh, fully charged. So I, I wanted to kind of leverage that experience. I, it, it, a lot of people were like, you know, uh, you know, well, I, I really didn't like it as much. And I went back to my iPhone. I'm like, okay, dude, that, that, you, you didn't have to, I mean, okay. You went back to your iPhone. Um, you know what I mean? Like the commentary on it was a little bit on, but it, it's one of those really weird, it was closing my experience with it because the device had to go back. Uh, it goes back to Samsung. I'm done with it. I mean, um, I feel like that kind of dovetails with what we were talking about with mid range phones is, yeah. uh, I just didn't like it as much. I'm going back to the iPhone. I'm like, okay, but, but what is it that you do on your phone? And this is where, I mean, like I will make videos specifically saying, here is my bias. So you understand what I do on a phone and why I value certain features over others. Mm -hmm. And this is what kills me about the sort of the, the quality of tech reviewing right now, where there's the implied hierarchy that seems to dovetail or correlate with popularity. So if it's Android versus Android, Samsung's the winner. Yeah. And if it's Android versus iOS, then it's um, Samsung versus Apple. <laughs> and Apple yep. typically wins because North American audiences will likely more uh, consistently own an iPhone over a Samsung. And when you try to dig into like, well, what is it that you do on it? I'm using phones for B. I mean, like I just shot uh, the, v the V27s. Mm -hmm. These are the Vivos. I shot the outdoor B-roll on a Moto. Like, I'm trying to use, like, the cameras and things that I actually have my SIM card in to produce that content. I think the B-roll came out really good. I mean, no one's going to claim that a Moto has the best content creator camera of its generation. <laughs> That's not a thing. But no. I needed 4K 60 frame per second video of a phone out in nature. And the Moto got that done beautifully well. Like, it looks yeah. great. It, it fits with my, my other content. So then I'm listening to someone say like, well, but average consumers don't do this and they don't do that. And I really feel like, no, you don't do those things. You don't shoot your B-roll on phones because you own fancy cameras and you don't write on these things because you have a dozen laptops that you can turn to to grab a screen and a keyboard. And you don't edit video on these things because you have an editor that you send the footage to who's already working on a Mac studio. Yep. So what do you do on your iPhone? Because as far as I can tell, you run Antu 2 and you run Geekbench and you play a couple minutes of Genshin and then it's just a messaging device. Because you I, have I a think, division of yeah. labor and, and yeah. people are doing all this other stuff for you. What, what, why would you pick iPhone over Galaxy? Well, iPhones are phones that just do phone things. That's it. They're, they're really expensive phones it's the limitation that do phone of, things. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people don't focus on you know the, the things that you're leveraging that where you're trying to demonstrate and what the the the, the don't get me wrong the the comments like that always kind of like get me I'm like okay like I, I think you just didn't get the video or you just didn't watch the video you just saw the first two minutes of it and you ended up basically posting a comment and you left so at the end what i look at it as um you know it, and for all the things that samsung and everything that that is inside the s23 ultra and the note 23 ultra is a great phone it just, it's not going to be a phone that I'm going to be rocking on a daily basis. I still, I mean, my wife loves it. And I think that's why uh, we upgraded the, the the device I did purchase myself just for the reference. Cause everybody was like, you know, you, you lost me as Samsung sent me this. I'm like, dude, if you followed the channel, you would know I bought my own and it's <laughs> oh, not just, the, it's not just a review. You know? you. Yeah. It's like, okay. Um, I get it. You, you don't like it when companies send out phones, but so the, the story, I guess what I was trying to shoot for was it was kind of closing a chapter for me with the S23 Ultra. It's a great device. There's a lot of good things going on for it. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily the one that my, my SIM card will sit in. And it's not because nothing yeah. things wrong with the phone. It just I, I, I think that's that's kind of what's fun between us is I think we both have a love of camera focused phones. Yeah, but I, I think between I, the two of us, I'm the bigger stylus guy. And that's true. I, I don't think you you really you really. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to phrase that like to make this confrontational. How dare you, TK, not appreciate the stylus? No, no, no. Um, go ahead. No, no, just I've tell me exactly been... what you feel. Just, just, just tell me exactly. <laughs> I'm how pulling up these sleeves. I'm let's sorry. Get some uh, hold on. Let's um, do the. But, but, let's go. Yeah. Uh, what are you saying? Uh, there we go. Yeah. Creed three is now available to buy, right, Creed, and you're yeah. about to watch a better boxing match than Creed. Absolutely. Right here, you know, when YouTubers fight over uh, stylus, yeah. 
but I've Sorry. never been able to completely let it go from the classic days of palm trails and pocket PCs. I like having yeah. a fine point touch computing solution. And I've always held up the notes as being some of the best devices for Samsung making a purpose built oh, activity yeah. device. A editing so much so, content with it. Yeah, absolutely. So much so that my SIM card is currently in a Moto that, that has stylus sound. support. Right? No, absolutely. So, so that, that to me is, I think, a perfect view. Both of us would praise Xiaomi and Vivo and Oppo for camera tech. Like yeah. right now, that is an impressive uh, new tier of smartphone photography that even better allows us to get our work done mm -hmm. on mobile devices. But I think one of those things, like if you don't know where I'm coming from with the stylus, then you're not going to appreciate why I will position a Note as a different phone from a Galaxy S. I'm oh, yeah. doing this to be insufferable to Samsung. It is, notes, it is not an S. But I'm doing it, it with yeah. purpose because I want to specify this is not the experience you get with Galaxy S. You will only get it with this one flavor of the phone, and it's yep. special. Mm -hmm. It is special that you get this experience on a Note 23. And, and, and that, to me, is like... If we don't disclose that we got the product from the company, that's really scummy. If we don't, yeah. if we don't discuss what we do on devices, people have no idea where we're coming from. Yeah, yeah. And I have no patience for, I've got all this pretty B-roll and I've told you what the specs of the phone are, but you know what? I mean, I'm gonna probably just go back to my iPhone. It <laughs> is so insufficient for um, a product like the Note, which yeah. is going to take the crown jewel productivity phone award of 2023. It's already, oh the best productivity pocket computer of 2023. Absolutely. Even and, and if I it think adds this, teeth to infants. Uh, to me, I, I this is <laughs> like the, the direction what I was trying to shoot for is that I was in the mindset of productivity, connectivity, and uh, that, that's how it fit my usage. When I needed it to be everything that I wanted it to do when I was traveling, I needed to be able to answer emails, respond, sign contracts, do everything out of my phone, pr uh, project a desktop experience, log, log in and edit with LumaFusion using an S Pen. All of those yeah. things worked great for me. And that's why I so felt good. like the, the S23 or the Note 23 is that's why I wanted to kind of showcase that experience. It's like, if you want all of those, what, what Samsung's trying to sell you on is all of these things, and this is how well they work. And I wanted to show the work. I didn't want to necessarily just say the pictures look okay. So I showed content from all across the world. This is very, it's a very unique experience, which I don't feel like, I hope I have the opportunity to do this more often in the future, but the timing yeah. of when I got it, and I was traveling over to London for, for the trip. It's the best for way this, to test it Absolutely. Yeah. It's it, tested outside of its comfort zone. Outside of its usual, I'm getting the super fast one gigabit, you know, well, you know and, like all of that numbers. outside of your comfort zone where I have a solution for when I edit video here in my office. Yeah. What do I need a phone to edit video for? And you're like, I guess you just never leave your office then if you can't appreciate how good these tools are at doing that. And so yeah. that's the thing that kills me is like it is free of context and they never push the alternative device to what it's designed to do well. Yeah, and, and, and like, I think... When you push a, a note, I, with the exception of maybe the eight Gen 1 shenanigans and uh, game yeah, optimization I, service of last year, but when you push a note, you should expect a certain a tier of multitasking and exactly. performance. And, and it, I don't think it has the best camera, but it has a very good oh, camera system. It, like yeah. all of those things should fit for you getting work done. Exactly, and and that's also where we're failing is because we're not saying this is a, a truck, we're saying all cars are cars, and you're like, no, no, how is it a sports car? Is it a truck? Is it a heavy duty truck? Is it a light? You know, there light is duty truck. Is there, it, uh, in the market is right it a cargo now? Van. The, the note still <laughs> it still stands on its own, and it still has no competition in direct competition in the, in the maturity of the S Pen functionalities and in the the tools that we've seen in there. S Pen on a Note has has grown so much, and we've had. I mean, Motorola brings in the stylus, and they bring in functionalities. We've seen, yeah. um, you know, uh, even TCL bringing in uh, a stylus version, a stylo uh, replacement for well, the and, LG and series. I, I'm I'm using the Moto Edge Plus specifically yeah. because I like Ready Four better than Dex. Oh, and I, it, absolutely, and I, and I feel it, like Ready Four is definitely parody. a better. Yeah, it brings parity to a lot of the S Pen features, even though I think the S Pen is is more mature. I think it's a more yeah. robust solution. It, it is, and I um, think that's what it is. The, the main difference being, it is not the best. I would say the Note is the best, but I got 
an, a Moto Edge Plus with 512 gigs of storage for under $500. And I, that's and, the, yeah, it's like, and you can never get that. The Note is better, but it's not twice as good. No. It's <laughs> a I, Moto Edge 512. It, it, it really, it, so. yeah, it, it really depends on what you're looking for. So, but yeah, so that was my, mostly it on my thing on the S23. Uh, it, it was kind of like the end of a, of a of a of a nice little area, a time of spending with it. Well, um, you, you and... got the question, you know, Michael oh, Corcoran is saying, what what phone does your SIM card live in? Putting you on the spot. Since it's not the, <laughs> since it's not the Note, how dare you not be um, beholden to Samsung for all of your smartphone right. computing needs? What what so, what could you uh... possibly shill? What could you possibly be shilling right now? That's not so... that's not a Samsung. The Find X6 Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Barry nailed it. It's the it. camera. It's where, back at the camera. Barry's... No, so Barry, the, the Barry, had... Barry wrote, that's a great Oppo question, uh, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like it's a, like a leading question. No, no, look. Um the you're you're right. I've I've been leaning more so towards photography uh, centric devices because typically what and it's like when we look at like for me in the past, the 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 best editing or production laptop that i used to get was always a gaming laptop not because i that's all i did is because they typically have the best hardware and then for of the course you know yeah. yeah for the press pricing you get that nice balance and but you're still getting great uh you know gpu performance oppo's find x6 pro has been so good mm -hmm. like it is seriously so good on the camera department and it does every it has video out it has uh, uh i can mirror ca I, I can screencast uh my content off of it i can run anything and everything i want on it and it runs beautifully fast and beautifully good large amount of storage 512 16 gigs of ram like everything that i could have ever wanted out of a device and it and it just does it great there are some limitations that I need to still leverage off. Obviously, nearby share is not in there and all that. But the amount of the this the speed of content transfer, uh, they they went with the fastest RAM, the fastest storage, uh, fast USB C connectivity. So to me, it's like it's it's hard for me to leverage it, it's not even appreciate it. So uh, yeah, Pixel was my main device, and I still love my Pixel. I don't. I, there's not going to be any hate on that. But like literally, the Xiaomi 13 Pro uh, is my work phone and my personal phone, and the Find X6 Pro. It, it behooves me to basically to try to enjoy as much content out of yeah. it as I can. Uh, we were watching my son last night playing. Uh, they were doing a band performance at open house at their school. And oh, my God, that that three X. Oh, my God. Yep. Just jump in that three X zoom with there in that natural bokeh, just the color performance. And I showed the picture to Vanya and she's holding the note, obviously. And she's like, wow, <laughs> why is your picture better? I'm like, you know, it's it's an Oppo. It's. It's a camera well, it, that uses a main so sensor you, as a secondary. You weren't trying to fake a photo of the moon. No. So if you were my, only my... faking a moon photo, then the Samsung would win. That's Absolutely. all you should do with your. your phone I I just wanted to take moon. I photos. wanted to add pictures. I mean, if I maybe I want to see if I can take baby pic, uh, some pictures of the baby pictures of my sure. son and insert and, the and teeth throw back them in. through the yeah maybe, yeah the AI it, upscaling. It, Give them some dentures. Orthodontists hate oh, this one trick. Well, we've been working on that whole yeah. Free, no, I know we need to free denture mode for your kids. <laughs> It's so it's a challenge. Go. It's a challenge. But um, for for me, I have like it, I don't know how to explain it. That that MWC was great, but that last few days we spent in Malaga with the Find X6 Pro, it was consistent. Wow, wow, what? Wow. Yeah. Seriously? Wow. No. How in the? Wow. Whoa. And it was consistent. Like we tried different areas, and, and it was early hardware, and not early hardware, early software on, on hardware. And then later when we got it back again, it was and again. It so to me the long story is, yeah. Uh, the SIM card is a, is a big thing. Which device holds your SIM card is a big statement of fact. Uh, when you're done with a phone, does does your SIM card jump back into an iPhone or something like that? That also changes and colors the narrative a little bit differently as as opposed to do you live in the Android ecosystem? Do you appreciate what Android does, the customizations and, and the different things that you're able to do and what the improvements have been got coming up? So this is why I'm excited again for um, like that, that ready and not the ready for the PC Connect on the, on the OnePlus pad. Yeah. It's because it's built into Oppo devices and sure. it's been there for a while and it leverages Windows and you're easily, you know, you're very comfortable. Like when I get back my Windows, it'll work fine because I don't have a Windows PC right now. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to, I, I ordered a, a pre-built like we talked about before, but the chip that I'm trying to go for is so short on demand, uh, so high on demand right now that I have like a month lead time before I'm able to get it. So I'll, I'll, I may get my PC by the end of April, maybe early May. So till then, I'll be hoofing it on, uh, on laptops for, for a while.
Oh, <laughs> just make your kid wear a moon costume. Oh my god. Well, yeah, that's actually that would be funny if Omar was wearing a moon costume, and then if Samsung decides to cut up everything else and just give me a perfect picture of the moon, that's how you know it's good. It's pretty great. That's how, that's how, that's but, how you know. That's how you know you're getting the good photography is when it's AI, my friend. It, it's AI moon. upscaling, man. Just remember. Oof. But uh, uh, yeah. So uh, Dan, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Dan, uh, my PC did totally die. Uh, it was it was my CPU that basically took the took the bullet, and I decided as opposed to try to upgrade the entire PC or try to replace the CPU for that, I'm gonna basically harvest all the parts that work, and I'm gonna give that to my son on his PC, and I'm just gonna get myself a, cool. a pre build with a, a good warranty on it on the parts. And uh, I decided to go for the for the latest AMD Ryzen chip, which apparently is almost impossible to get. But yeah, I, I, I just, I didn't want to keep, you know, hoofing through all the sites. So long story short, I went with CLX <laughs> um, and nice. uh, yeah, so I'm, I am going to keep my 3080 Ti out of it, but sure. yeah, uh, Omar can keep the 2080 Ti because I think, I think I still have the 2080 Ti sitting around. I still need to figure out what I'm going to do with my rebuild. Um, but I think, I think I'm going to go 7900 XTX um, yeah. for my next GPU. So we'll, we'll I, see. Uh, when you're looking at that, do some comparisons with the 3D version of it. I think I, I was originally going to go with the X. Oh no 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 the the GPU. I think oh, I might sorry. Nvidia. I keep, not forget, I keep forgetting. Yeah 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 yeah. I, yeah, I it's so annoying because it's 7950 X3D is is, is the GPU. CPU. Well, no, but there's the 7950... a 7900 XTX is the GPU. It's I should have so. picked up on the T part of it, but yeah, no no I know I'm with you. It's so um, I wish AMD <laughs> didn't do that because it's so dumb and confusing. But it's two different um, lines. I'll probably end up going. 7900 and 7900 <laughs> <laughs> dual 7900s and then you guess which one it no, i'm just kidding um right so uh speaking of which uh so for the end of this week i i am going to do a lot of content shooting and stuff like that there's some stuff coming up next week um but uh, i need to finish my video on and i know i'm like really really late on uh, uh the razor edge so i need to put that out hopefully i get that out this weekend and then mm -hmm. um I'll put out some content on some of the stuff that I'm going on next week. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's uh, it's tech, but it's different field of tech. Um, it's excited to kind of get a chance to check that out. But are you pushing anything out this week, or is there anything coming up in the near future you want to maybe uh, um, other than when you uh, your so much stuff? I still haven't finished that video on the wireless display from you Perfect, so that definitely oh yeah needs yeah. to happen. Um, I've got a couple of oh, um, reviews. I, I may that... be getting uh, their uh, what's it called, the seventeen-inch display, not the wireless, oh, nice. uh, the just the standalone. They make, they make great. They make really good monitors. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so some really good stuff there. Uh, I've got lots of phone follow-ups, like the note uh, note camera video. Mm -hmm. I also want to do something similar for the Vivo because that one-inch sensor. Um, I need to do. I need to. I, as well, I yeah. really have no idea what order this stuff is going to be coming out at but i the on the patreon right now is the preview for the moto edge plus mm -hmm. um uh, i just put out a short just talking about notification history because i feel a lot of people don't don't use that and they probably should yeah um, i'm going to be looking at two-factor authentication solutions after Good seeing stuff. uh snubs video on that and then i want to do some follow-ups like i did a comparison between the um the pixel 7 pro and the one plus 11 and i kind of need to finish up i've got a script for a less expensive mid-ranger versus a more expensive premium tier device and why those are different mm -hmm. um so I i've got like six or seven different videos in varying states of production and i have no idea which one's going to be done next so stay tuned no, it's going to be fun it, it, it's exciting <laughs> it's, it's like a little bit of teasers on everything but you know with the release date tbd in the near future kind of thing as long as it's not next year we're doing fine <laughs> right exactly. from our yeah, from last week yeah from i'll last just year. do it in 2024 it's fine yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll come up it'll come out later lexi is like what i'm like oh yeah um, okay, so with that being said, I do want to say first and foremost, obviously we're we're, we're hitting our natural <laughs> two hour, yeah, <laughs> yeah that go. two hour, that one hour that always ends at two hour concept kind so, of thing. So our our normal ninety minute podcast, which goes out to two hours, it's 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 it's, it's, exactly it's a ninety minute to two. Hour. How, how how hard is that one? It's a simple converse. It's a simple uh, linear trend. You know, ninety to one twenty. It's the next uh, you know uh, refresh rate uh, capability. Uh, but I do want to say first and foremost, obviously, thank you to everybody for hanging out with us. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, if you haven't had yet, please like and subscribe. And, uh, you know, obviously, it'll keep you posted on when we put out some of that beautiful uh, conversations and banter that we had today. We almost had fisticuffs going on in there. Um, <laughs> the audio podcast should be coming up very soon. There's a link for that in the description as well. 
And of course, uh, you know, check out, make sure to check out Juan on his Patreon and check out the, uh, the early access scripts and give him some comments on those as well. Um, and if catch him on Monday with the SGDQA as usual, uh, as he starts yeah, off, yeah. he starts the week and we end the week here. That's how we do it. Perfect. Here. So with that how being said, uh, I will be on remote next week, but we'll, we'll make sure hopefully things work out. Take care, be safe, stay safe, everybody. And of course, we'll see you guys next week for the best of our week. Bye-bye for now. Bam. And I 